Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Yeah, I hear I'm chatting to the noise. Go too quick, can't stop for the talking. I hear I'm chatting with the noise. Just too sharp with the prize. White girls let it tell me I'm awesome. Yeah, hot like fire on the pan. If you wanna touch my please use caution. Call like zero degrees. I'm out the cage, gotta let out the beast. Revolutionary guy, let out the streets. Locked in a cage, I'ma let out the, let out the, let out the. Let out the, let out the, let out the sheets. We came from one man, forget my peace. We take the west side, take on the east. I'ma put him in a cage, never let out the, let out the, let out the. Yeah. I hear him chat to the noise. Move too quick, can't stop for the talking. I hear him chat with the boys. Not so tough, but man's keep walking, yeah. Just too sharp with the prize. Fight girls, let it tell me I'm awesome, yeah. Hot like fire on the pine. If you wanna touch my feet. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Happy Greg Cody Tuesday. Yeah. We started the shadow show with a throwback to an ode to Ryan Tannehill from how many years ago was that, Greg? Well, that's a while ago. I, I referenced Joey Harrington and Cleo Lemon. <laughs> so we gotta we gotta research that. That's uh It was the year he was drafted. It was like the season leading up right. to his rookie year. Yes. Okay. So when was that, 09 or something? You or? said he wasn't as good as RG3. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know, that that too dates the song. <laughs> <laughs> you had a big smile on your face listening to that song. I, I had completely forgotten that that was a song that I sang. 2012 was when that song was created. Uh, I got to admit, Stugatz, I, I wonder if you had the same reaction as I did. Joey Harrington, names that make me smile. I don't know. I just I heard <laughs> wow. Joey Harrington. I remember it took me back to another time. I think there's a, a sneaky game. I know 90s baseball players make us smile, but I've been reading this uh, Aaron Rodgers book, and there are so many great names that <laughs> that, that get me to smile. O.J. Atagway. <laughs> That'll J. make me smile. Arrington, yes. Tully Banta Kane. Right. I would say Cleo Lemon is actually the name that makes me smile in that song. It does. Yes. It's just the perfectly <laughs> ghastly name for a professional athlete. Dad. Devin Aromashadu. <laughs> <laughs> I want to play this game. I want to play this game for this entire day now we've got a big show for you guys today we're going to play that uh raheem mostert interview yes a little bit later are you asking yeah well yeah. You know, i'm just confirming right. we uh, also got a continuation of the sueys yesterday was a strong day yeah strong day dismissals and best fakes stugats they undersold you on the dismissals everyone's like billy billy's coming this year and billy had some great dismissals yeah but then it was backloaded with stugats again and again and again it felt like michael jordan in the fourth quarter well it's also it's that that category is just always such a stugats category that you like to mention the people that are coming for the title like I, I agree with you. There's no one. No one comes for the Stugatz type. I'm not there. No, but I'll I love. It. I love that you have a flurry of Stugatz takes at the very end of that. I think that's what it means talking uh, just, about. It made me feel good. You lowered the bar. Like people, listen. People around here think perhaps I had a bad year. Go listen to best dismissals. Okay, I had a year. And Stugatz, oh, did I have a year? And, I dismissed at the highest of levels. The, I mean, around Suey Week, the 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 hardest thing for me is when someone just walks by me and they mutter something that I forgot to put in the Sueys. And Stugatz hit me with that yesterday. Like yeah. he was like, "Oh, dismissal, good category. You forgot Joe Mauer." <laughs> oh, uh, I mean, he did. I was like, "Oh my god!" Like, First ballot Hall of Famer. Information please. that would have yeah. been helpful yesterday. <laughs> no one. Asked. What we should do on Mystery Crate this week is behind the scenes of how the Sueys are created. Because even, even let's just assume that Joe Maurer had been in there. The lining up of what comes where, that tells a story, too. That creates it because it felt like a prize fight. And here comes Billy. Oh, what a big wide overhand. Oh, my God. And Sugat's his little days. And we come back, and now it's the 11th round, and all of a then sudden. Shohei. Bah, 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 <laughs> uh, I am rattled, I mean, because uh, I walked in today, and every Tuesday I could bank on on a couple of things. Mm-hmm. A smiling Greg Cody and a hug from Greg Cody. Okay. And today I walked in, and for the first time uh, that I can remember, Greg Cody was in a bad mood. A bad mood. A, a sour mood, and I thought he was mad at me. He didn't get up. He barely said hello. There was no hug. There was no embracing. And so I don't know if you experienced the same Greg Cody as I did, but I am wondering what is going on this morning with Greg Cody. I walked in the studio, and I know I'm not. So, I'm I'm sitting in Dan's seat, so I got to do the Dan Leakey Fawcett thing. I saw Greg and Chris hissing at each other, hissing yeah. at each other, and I just said, 
this must be some, you know, family circumstances. Let me give them their privacy and walk out. I came back in, sat down, and I found Greg uh, voice dictating to his phone <laughs> about needing an extension for the trade deadline, and I really need a yes from you. I don't know oh, who Oh, you heard he him is. campaigning to my brother because he just voted yes in the group chat. So you wow. texted Michael looking for that yes. Uh, unabashedly, I did. <laughs> uh, there was no strong I mean, I just said, if you agree that we should trade the, extend the trade deadline, please go in the group chat and vote yes now because the commissioner put a arbitrary noon deadline wow, today arbitrary. on voting yes. Even though I'm working and, and I barely have time See, to campaign. You're, just, you're making this more confusing. Let me try to make this as simple as possible. Mm, we have you. a keeper league, and there's a trade window before the keeper league in case you have a plethora of keepers. And Which you're like, I oh, do. I can only keep four, but I have six. Let me, I can get some value now, trade away. And a couple weeks ago, I sent out an email mm -hmm. saying this trade window is open from till August 23rd. Two weeks, so it's like what, from the 9th to the 23rd. I gave the dates of when it, and, and then that, what else can I do there? I you sent can, the email. You can send out a reminder oh, the day um, before. Well, like Roger point. Goodell, on the like I'm Here sure that uh, Adam Silver calls every team and, and NFL, on the day of, and it's like, hey, guys, yeah, well, yeah. this is your last day to make a move. Because yeah, a uh, uh, family and friends fantasy league is akin to the NFL. If there's yeah, no I rules, what are we? Is what it, are we without rules? Was that your limited fake Adam Silver, by the way? But I'm just saying, so now my dad is pressuring through this group text, this group text, every one of my friends and people in our family of just threatening to quit the league. No, I'm not like, threatening vote, to quit. I, I screwed up. I now am going to lose keepers because I just didn't do the trades when I was supposed to. Right. So now I'm going to pressure everybody to vote to extend this trade deadline. No pressure. So... Chris, you should know he's got a sheet of it's like a grid. Right, a sheet he's of crossing paper. off names. Like, and he's, oh. I sw it's like House of Cards. That show prep right there. How yeah. many yeses do I need to get? One no vote. See all the pressure? Everyone's voting yes for him because people, even though it benefits other people in the league, like, oh, wow. Then why are people voting yes? Because yeah. you, you're you Greg Cody and everyone doesn't maybe, want to upset you. Maybe you're wrong, Chris. Right. I disagree. I'm, first of all, I haven't voted. I'm the commissioner. I'm trying to stay out of this. How are you, you going to vote? That's a fine, by the way. I, 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 I'm hoping that they get the enough votes without me having to but vote. Because if, I, I which don't, way would you hope it goes? If it's a tie, which I'm, way are we going? If it comes down to your vote, yeah. Yeah. I think yes. it's a no because it's unfair yeah, for the see. league. There's well, a window. Like it just Because he screwed up now, it's just, hey, let's extend this. But you agree if I get the majority vote, which is seven, yes. that, okay, you're not going to bitch and moan. Right. No, oh, wow. I'm, I okay. let the league. Huh. I want the league to speak, but it's like I That's think you're pressure. Like I don't think a lot of these people voting yes actually want it. I think they're just like giving in to you because in fairness you're, because it's, it's fair. not fair. I it's mean, no one wants Greg out of the league. He's the star yeah. of the league. I mean, but but I see what Chris is saying. Chris it's, is saying that he's leveraging his celebrity yes. no. by saying if if we don't change this rule. I walk, and no one wants to see Greg Whereas walk either. Greg another, never said that. If I never another said that. team right. was pulling this, you would be the first person like this is. If you had made your deals in the window and some other team was doing this, you would be the loudest voice. It could be. Being anti this. So, That's the part. <laughs> maybe. Hey, man. Hey, we, we vote in our best interests. That's yeah. what makes democracy beautiful. <laughs> yes, but, and we are a democracy, at least for now. But <laughs> at least Juju Gotti's actually in the league and hasn't voted yet. Oh, oh. yeah. By the way, Juju, if you're listening, <laughs> uh, because there's an arbitrary noon deadline on the vote, you're not going to go no, into no. the Keeper League group he, chat and look, vote yes, Juju. We we're not going to I will also show. say, my understanding is Chris is sending you away to run errands during this window, so he's not even giving you full time to to make said adjustments. No, yeah. no, 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 not not at all. So I, I, I want to ask a question. I want to ask a question <laughs> to to Greg because he, you know, every Tuesday he comes in with a list of topics that he's hot on. He wants to talk yeah. on, and number one, the number one bullet on the list is Dolphins fans ranked sixth of one twenty four on the misery index. I Googled this. I looked around. I was trying to figure out, did Sports Illustrated do this? Well, I guess they don't yeah. do stuff anymore. All they do is aggregate. I said, did ESPN do this? Where is this misery index? Uh, it's my creation. I invented it. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. No, I devised uh, a fan index, a, a fan misery index. Right. Uh, FMI. Which, right. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right, right. And, uh, and by my reckoning, I researched all 124 teams in the – NFL, NBA, uh, NHL, and MLB. That's four. Uh, I, I, I thought about including MLS and, and WNBA and everything, but they hadn't stood the test of time. They'd only been around 20, 25 years. 
So I went with the, the traditional big four teams, Okay. researched all 124 teams, and by my metric, <laughs> the Dolphin fans uh, rank number six on the Misery Index. So before we get into the details of the Misery Index and the methodology behind it, yeah. who are the five teams ahead of the Dolphins who are more Good miserable? Question. Yeah. You know what? I can, I can tell you that, but I would have to look up the you column do that. I you do and that. While he does yeah. it, that ding you just heard was Juju voting yes. So <laughs> okay. now... It looks yes. like my dad has seven votes, and this stupid trade deadline is going to get extended. <laughs> democracy. It is democracy, Billy. This is, Thank you. This is actual democracy. This is just shadiness going on yes, in the no. background. Yeah. I didn't pressure anybody. Worked out his way. I think I just happened to. I mean, I'm you don't like, like a Cheshire cat here. So you created this misery index, and yes. you have to look it up? You don't know the five teams? I don't know offhand. I mean, I a lot of teams. That's five. I mean, yo, $50. Just so yeah. you know. Yeah. All, right, sorry. All right, here it is right here. Okay. I love the obliviousness. That's my favorite part. I, I can actually give you a top ten if you want. Oh, let me. Okay. Look, okay. Or uh, bottom ten, I should call it. Do well, you want right. to explain your misery index? No, I mean, no. I know you explained how you get how you went about it, but is it the most miserable fan base? Like, what is it? It's the fans who have the right, in my opinion, by my That's metric, six. to be the most frustrated. Okay. Okay, and Got we it. have th- I can tell you the three categories. So the fan bases that have the right to be the most frustrated with their teams. Yes. Okay. Right. All right, good. Okay. Right. Um, now, do you want me to do it from 10 to 1 or 1 to 10? 10 to 1. Let's okay. do Get the fanfare ready, Chris, please. Here we go. Okay. Number, it's number actu- 10. It's actually a tie for ninth. So wow. wow. Okay. Okay. Right. The this, tie for ninth. This is big. Is the Pittsburgh Pirates. Jeez, you've got the Dolphins fans is more miserable than Pirates fans at and seven. And the Washington Wizards. Interesting. Number eight, mm-hmm. Milwaukee Brewers. Oh. Number seven, Minnesota Vikings. Oh. Number six, Miami Dolphins. Number five, Toronto Maple Leafs. Number four, Atlanta Hawks. No. Number three, Cleveland Browns. Yeah. You gotta have fans. Number two, New York Jets. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and number one, despite their playoff win last year, the Detroit Lions. Wow. That's seven. Uh, so they're currently worse than the Jets. I, I don't know. Oh, that's eight. My fault. They're more miserable right now than Jets fans. Yeah. It's interesting. The yeah. Li- Lions fans? Lions fans, yeah. I can, I can, now the methodology. Yes. Right. Uh, Very important. The most points uh, wins or loses, depending on your point of view. There, so there are multiple categories you can score points in. Right. There are three categories. <laughs> okay. That's the, nine. The Miami Dolphins accrued 112 points to wow. rank sixth. Okay. Uh, the three categories are. Most consecutive seasons since the last playoff victory. Uh-huh. All right. Most consecutive seasons since the last league championship. Okay. And most consecutive seasons since the last championship game appearance. Okay. Uh, so the Lions won a playoff game last year. Yes. But, right. but, but they haven't won a championship or, or been, been in a championship game in 66 years. <laughs> so that's times two. So that's 132, mm. which was the losing total. I like Got it. it. I like it. That's an interesting methodology there. I, are you counting St. Louis for the Atlanta Hawks no, it, championship? It, no, that, that's a very astute question by mm-hmm. you. It, it's a fan <laughs> index. so I, I make He it, knows his index. Yeah, probably. I make it clear in the column that, that uh, I'm going only by – uh, where the team is located now. In other words, Las Vegas Raiders fans don't have to uh, inherit the misery of oh, what the team did in Oakland got it. 40 years ago. Mm-hmm. Got it. And by th- by this metric, Dolphins fans are the sixth most miserable yes. among all professional sports. Yeah, because the uh, – and I don't know exactly, but roughly the – Super Bowl victory drought has been 50-some years. Mm-hmm. The Super Bowl appearance drought has been going on 40 years. The playoff victory drought is an NFL-long 23 years. So those three categories together accrued 112 misery points. I think that's a fair number for the Dolphins because you have to factor in how passionate the fan base is about the actual team. 
I don't know if Atlanta cares that the Hawks haven't been good. Yes. But I know Dolphin fans are upset the Dolphins haven't been good in a long time. I know Leafs fans are upset that Toronto hasn't been good in a long time. Right. Some of these fan bases, I'm not certain they even care enough, you know? Yeah, I, I, that's 10, by the Jeez. way. Uh, what was the vote? Uh, how much you... <laughs> Dad, can you silence your phone so we stop hearing dings? <laughs> I, I'm not hearing dings. <laughs> I didn't hear it. <laughs> you didn't hear the last seven dings? No. <laughs> ten. The last ten. I've been counting. I love All right, you. I, I just got turned off my phone. Here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Powered off. Sorry. Uh, you only owe, what's that, $1,000? Okay. <laughs> I don't know my tab. <laughs> ten times ten. $1,000. So, so where I'll, is uh, Greg I'll on the... I'll sell you the money. <laughs> where is Greg on the Tannehill thing? Oh, you know what? T- they got rid of Mike White, which I thought was an upgrade. Skylar Thompson... You thought that was an upgrade, just getting rid of Mike White? Well, they're going to so p- having no one keep, <laughs> is no, no, better than Mike White. Having no keep, Mike White is better than having Mike White. I, I, I agree is, with that. I assume they're going to keep him on the practice squad. Shut up, Sigats. You he, loved Mike White. He, he, I, I did not. I never loved Mike White. Yes, you guys you made, did. No, you if guys, Mike White started the entire year, we'd be in the no, playoffs right now. Dolphin Get fans made such a big deal about getting Mike White from the Jets, and I'm like. Guys, are you kidding oh, me? He's not up. that good. Shut I mean, up. I, don't make me go back in the logger and find those Mike White shows <laughs> after those prolific passing efforts. Get Perhaps there was here. that one show. They, they let him the go. One be- game. They Mike let White. him go because he was making a lot more than Skylar Thompson, and they're basically the same guy. Right. But uh, this has opened the door for a lot of people wondering. And congratulations, Dolphins fans. You've come out of it. After decades upon decades of talking about what the answer is at QB1, we've now shifted the focus to the conversation <laughs> being QB2. Right. And I'm not being sarcastic. This is a big step. Yes. This is like the most interesting thing surrounding the team at this point in terms of like, ooh, what's going to happen here? So I am I think it would be really cool for Tannehill, who had a nice career, I think proved himself worthy of that draft pick. Was he the franchise quarterback that Tua turned into? No. But he had a really nice, wonderful career. He's still out there, still available. It'd be a nice way to complete the circle for him. I feel like this is what the misery index is all about, right? Is it's the shifting of the conversation from once upon a time, Ryan Tannehill, is he our franchise quarterback to Ryan Tannehill, should we consider him for our backup job? Right. I feel like that should bump you guys lower on the misery index. You guys are getting <laughs> happier, right? Yeah. I mean, Tua, Tua still has his haters, believe me. There's plenty of Dolphin fans who didn't think he deserved the, the money he got or that he's all that or that he might not get injured again. Uh, there's Tua haters out there, but I agree with Mike. I think he's a franchise quarterback. Uh, as for the backup, as much as I think Tannehill is a, is a valuable veteran who you wouldn't hesitate to put in, I think you, you keep Skylar Thompson. I think, wow. he, I so think the, he won the backup. I think Tannehill is such a big upgrade there. Like, backup quarterback has become increasingly important in the NFL. Joe this, Flacco last sure. year. Yeah. Joe Flacco possibly this year with the Colts. Right. I think having Tannehill, Tua, there's no insecurity with Tua. It's his job. They just paid him over $200 well, there, million. Dollars, there is but it's ins- good to have Tannehill backing him up in the event Tua does get hurt. Exactly. There's the insecurity. The insecurity is his health. The insecurity is that he's a guy who's demonstrated an inability to stay on the field and so rather than have a guy in Skylar Thompson where you're like okay this is a, a roster spot checked off you got some comfort and Tannehill is a bona fide starter in this league you will not miss a beat if he has to step into that role no yeah I, I, I think if the league thought as much about Tannehill as you all do he certainly would have been signed by now. I, I think um, he's sitting around. Yeah, I think he's got options. Yeah. Yes, and, and he's weighing them. Okay. Right? I think yes. in terms of a backup role, like that's top tier in the NFL. I do think that the team would certainly be better, and I'd feel better if I were a Dolphin fan if my QB2 was Ryan Tannehill yes. on a team. And last year was a bit of an outlier in that. Tua stayed completely healthy, answered some of those questions, but it's not like those questions don't still remain. Mm-hmm. You want to be able to plug in a guy that you can potentially win a playoff game with, and Ryan Tannehill has shown that. He's gone to an AFC Championship game. That's the important thing about a backup. It's not, you know, they will lose a step mm-hmm. if if they go from Tua to Ryan Tannehill. Tua is better than Ryan Tannehill. You're going to lose major. a step, Stu, but no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. he's correct. Can he win you a game or two? Yeah. Can the backup quarterback win you a game That's or right. two? And, and if you're Ryan Tannehill, Tannehill can. if you're Tannehill, you can't predict injuries. So why would you commit to a team? Why wouldn't you just sit back like Joe Flacco did last year and just be like, "Who needs me?" Well, there's a couple reasons. One, you want to keep getting paid. Number two, you want to okay. be familiar with the playbook. Well, you know, got like you, 80 million from the Dolphins. So you can still get a little bit more, but also you want to be familiar with the playbook. You want to be comfortable when you walk in. You're not learning things on the fly. I, I look. You want to play though. And by the way. Well, there's no starting jobs out there. That's so. why you wait. 
Well, I don't know. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you who also benefits from this. Skylar Thompson. Because I submit to you there's no better job in the NFL than QB3. Dude, all you do is you wear a visor, mm. you hold, you, you, you talk, you whisper. You're in the two key. hits away. Yeah. Dude, all you got to do is whisper <laughs> in some guy's ears. Everyone's like, yo, he's really smart. He's really contributing on the sideline. Dude, I don't do anything. I wear a red jersey in practice. I go against the number threes. I'm fine. I was thinking yesterday, I think it was Jared Stidham, that I saw a clip of him just being like, I know I'm a starting quarterback in this league. And I wonder... All these crappy quarterbacks that we look at, in their minds, they think, like, I just need my shot. Like, Jacoby Brissett, mm -hmm. do you think he's just like, oh, absolutely. I'm good being a backup? No. Or he's looking in the mirror every day, like, give me my opportunity. I'll be a, I'll still be a five-time pro He's player. tasted the blood. <laughs> he's, just he started. He was, he was out there playing, making. There, there has to be some quarterback out there that just gets it. I'm not that good. I, like, I don't want my guy to get injured ahead of me. I just want to be the backup. It was Carson Palmer's brother. Remember him? That dude, Jordan Palmer, the other Jordan Palmer, who oh, yeah. invented Run P, yeah. that app where yes. you can check yes. <laughs> to see if you could leave the uh, the movie theater to go to the bathroom. Like the other hallmark of someone who doesn't want to be a starting quarterback, coming up with app ideas, right? Like that's that's this like predated. <laughs> it predated apps. This was a website oh, that wow. you would ch open up in your browser, like, oh, I'm watching Alien Romulus right now. What's idea. a what's a good time for me to? go pee and not miss any plot points. There just has to be a quarterback out there that's just like, I'm no good. I can't believe I'm even a backup. I hope my guy stays healthy because I don't want to get exposed. Well, you, I, you I think there's plenty who believe that. I don't think there's many who would admit that. I don't know. I think in order to be a professional athlete, there is some sort of hubris you have to have baked in. You have to believe. Because it's, I mean, think about the odds. How many football players are in the country, in the world, and how many spots there are in the NFL. And then when you talk about quarterback positions, there's only – what, 32 teams, three spots per team? Some teams aren't even carrying a QB3 anymore, right? That's the new thing now. They just carry two. So when you think about that, you're talking about less than 96 spots in the world to do this. You have to have some sort of delusion about you. Having said that, once you're here, I think there are a lot of guys like – Not a bad gig. Yeah, you guys got it. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, Tua. Tua and uh, – oh, Ryan, come in here. <laughs> well, if, if, if you're Chad Henney backing up Patrick Mahomes, you have no illusion. But if it's a close race, well, hold you, on. Does Carson you, Wentz have an illusion? Because he's the backup now in Kansas City. Yeah, I mean, he <laughs> m more so than than an Chad. old Chad Henney. Yeah. Yes, you know what I mean. Right. Like, yeah. like Carson Wentz is a good example of a guy uh, like Ryan Tannehill who thinks I've proven myself in this league. Somebody got to give me another chance. I can still start. Mm -hmm. You know, you got you got Carson Wentz walking into the quarterback room and sit, looking at Mahomes like. You're on thin ice, buddy. <laughs> you make that mistake. I'm ready. And you know, and by the way, does does Patrick Mahomes think to the back of his in the back of his head, wait, this is exactly what happened to Alex Smith. He was the number one guy and and national radio hosts were singing his praises. And then I came in and I, you know, kind of like Andy Reid is a little bit of like uh, infidelity, right? You yeah. cheat if you get with a cheater. Guess what's going to happen to you? You're going to get cheated on at some point. I think Mahomes has total job security. I don't yeah, know. I think he's pretty good for now. 855-NBA-JUMP. Let us know if you think Carson Wentz has a chance of stealing the job from Patrick Mahomes. He's confused why he's not fielding quarterback controversy questions. How's practice, Carson? Good. I, I, I'm just putting my best tape out there. Yeah, he, yeah, he loves the it's game. It's a coach's he call. Does. He loves it. I my mean. job is to let Andy Reid know if you've got two quarterbacks, that means you've got what, Sugats? It means you only. Uh, it means you don't have one. I mean, there you go. Yes. Well said. <laughs> Nailed it. By the way, Ryan Tannehill has made nearly two hundred million dollars. Like yeah. he's he's fine on the money front. Right? I'm telling you right now, every single person, whenever they say he's fine on the money front, he doesn't need more money. Everybody needs more money. Everybody needs more money. There's nobody out there. Yeah, that, but, the true. billionaires are he's fighting. Right. Everybody he, wants preach. more money. Yeah. But he ha he wants to be able to play. So the most important thing to him is I want options. Like you're just saying, like he better sign somewhere quick because he just needs to pay the well, light no. bill. Like I, I, he, he has the luxury to be like I'm gonna wait till someone gets hurt. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying the idea that a this is a pretty good bet that this guy's gonna get hurt. But b you want to be as comfortable as possible. The best version of of Ryan Tannehill knows the playbook, isn't learning it like on the fly, on the flight over from wherever he lives. But he clearly disagrees with you because he's waiting. Well, like if he was like, man, I got to get to know this playbook, he would have signed somewhere. What are the other jobs? 
I think he's just waiting for someone to get hurt. That's like, all he's doing. Any, yeah. Jordan Love goes down. Boom. I'm a like I'll be a Packer. Ah, they got cool. Malik Willis. Nah. You mean, don't know that there's a market for Ryan Tannehill. I think that in terms of backups, like who's better out there? Who's better out there? He he would have signed by now if he were had teams coming after him. Are you he, saying Tannehill has too much pride where he will not allow himself to be a backup? He has to wait for someone to get hurt. I think he's he Ryan looks, bleeping Tannehill. I think he looks at himself as I'm the best backup out here right now. As soon as anybody gets hurt, people are going to come calling. Me. Well, he's not a backup then. Everybody's got a backup quarterback. Why do they need to call somebody who's a free agent who hasn't been signed in, in a whole offseason? I feel like what I'm saying is not crazy. They'll call like, Brady first. The best backup waits. <laughs> Guys and gal. Yo. I just saw something very exciting. What happened? I just scrolled by on Twitter. The Miami Heat today at noon in Pembroke Pines are looking for the hippest, coolest, young at heart, senior citizen dancers to be part of. The Heat Golden Oldies. Wow. You, you know that's Charlotte Wilder. Where's Poppy Wilder's. at? What's the age thing? Can we get Dan in there? That's that's Charlotte Wilder's favorite. That's like oh, she goes to Heat games and she goes nuts. They're always wearing something. They start dancing midway through. Right. Woo! So Poppy's not here. Dan is up in New York. He is covering Jets and Giants uh, training camp let for me us. Yeah. Hold on. Let me read. The, there's requirements here. Must sign a waiver, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Oh, must be 60 years of age. Ah, uh, discrimination. I'm out. At one point, Dan's oh. mother was going to try out. Dan's what? mom? Yeah. Yeah. Really? I think so. How that's, old are you? Uh, I'm older than 60. Ooh. Wow. Don't go there. What do you no, mean? don't even, don't even oh. go there. It's today, though. You got your dancing shoes on? Thank I have haven't my, we been talking my about a big, shoes. a big birthday coming up? Wait a second. <laughs> Wait a second. to show those cards? <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah. You could <laughs> use a tryout as like prep. I'm learning. I'm getting my dancing shoes ready for my big 70th party. Wow. I don't dance. Huh. But you're going to have no. to at this party. That's wow. just a technicality. Why? No, that, that's shocking to me. I imagine Greg Cody to be a great dancer. Really? Yes. That's, really? that's odd. I don't know why. I hide yeah. on a dance floor. Didn't really? you dance wow. in Vegas when they came out with the band and stuff? You did a little jig, didn't you? I may have. I mean, I have my, my hokey <laughs> dance moves, but they're not really. Oh, with the hand, like as a tail yeah. kind of thing? Yeah. Wait, can you paint that picture for us, hiding on the dance floor? Like, how do you do that? Okay, the only <laughs> time I that? dance is after several drinks at a wedding reception. <laughs> okay. okay? Done. Right. If the dance floor is really crowded with 30 or 40 people, yeah. I will go up there with my wife. During what I know to be a short song, <laughs> we will meander toward the middle of the dance floor so that if you're sitting at a table judging people dancing, you can't see me. Right. I'm 5'9". Love it. I'm in the middle of a throng of people. Uh-huh. I'm doing my little dance. Can't wait for the song to end. <laughs> you know, it's a two and a half minute song, so I'm good. And then we sit down again. I right. was always under the impression that you Check. don't want to be in the middle of the floor because the middle of the floor is kind of like, hey, this is where the best dancers are. If you're on the edges, people don't really pay attention. And also, there's a table right next to you. You can sit down if you feel like mm. uh, it's not going as well. Yeah, but you're on the edges and people could judge you. And that's yeah. what he that's what he's trying no, to prevent. What do you guys, right? I'm with a mean here. Like you get judged when you go into the, the middle. middle. Like, the circle surrounding, you don't get judged there. That's yeah. where you can just do the Will Smith, like side to side. Like this mm. is home that, right that's here. all I do. That's what I do. That's my idea of dancing. I think we need to do this. Do what? Registration starts at 11. It's in Pembroke Pines. It's on your way home. Can we send you? To the Golden Oldies. Yes. <laughs> come on. Okay. No. First of all, if I'm being truthful, yeah. not a huge fan of the Golden Oldies. What? Well, that's that's not a good start. Hold on. Right. Don't say that into Greg. a mic. Don't Greg. say that into Hold a on. mic. No, this is because an opportunity. Because you, you, Greg, I care about you. You can no, pull this rank. this is a chance here. Wait. Hang on. He can pull rank. Greg Cody doesn't need to audition. Right. All right. So don't mm-hmm. knock the golden oldies because we can just bomb in and say, hey, Greg wants to perform one of these days. And that's it? And they'll make it happen. No, this is oh, even more that. disrespectful that Greg's too good for the golden oldies. You've got to respect the tryout. Like yeah. That's what the Mike tryout. said. I'm saying he's too busy. <laughs> I don't like he's the got, idea. It's got a big deadline. <laughs> I don't they like don't need the to idea know that it's a of putting deadline. old people just, just because they're old. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> laughing at the elderly. <laughs> yeah, I'm with Greg. You don't like to just put them out there to perform for people to, to laugh at. They're it, on no, display. Exactly. They're human a, beings. Yeah. But no, they're no, good no, no. dancers, aren't they, aren't they, I mean? Yeah. Aren't they cute? No, they're no, not. No, 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 no. They're incredible dancers, yeah, I mean. first of all. They're better than a lot of young people dancing. Let's throw that out there. They're better than me. That's for sure. They go for cheap pops. No, they don't. Yes, they do. No. Yeah, you think it's one thing, and then they rip off their pants, and they start twerking their asses. It shocks me every time. I'm like, oh, no. Another outfit. I know that's Greg, weird. Greg, you can change them note. from within. Yeah, drain the swamp, Greg. <laughs> Look, uh, I'm gonna go see if we have the video ability to no, do this I, today. I, I don't absolutely. care what my dad says. No, 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 Greg. From a content standpoint alone, like I, 
get Rose, get Mike Puente, somebody out here with a camera just to watch you go through this audition. I think we could get some good stuff out of here. And I think you're underselling your dancing capabilities. I think they're trying to make you the golden oldie of the golden oldies, if you're going to be perfectly honest. Mm. I want. I think they want to send you out there to a bunch of people who are dancing and then look at you specifically and say, oh, isn't Greg cute? No, yeah, I, I'm the kind of guy who would tank the audition. Really? We yeah. know how the it is. not make you, the you, team. You actually think that I'm going to be a season-long golden oldie? Why not? That, yes. That's a great bit that we just gave it you is. a new job. Hold Showing on. up at 41 <laughs> games to dance. I don't think they're at all of them. Right? Not a, There's not a great setup. Games. You start Start dancing to Espresso by Sabrina Carpenter. The fans are appreciating it. This is nice. This is pleasant. Boom. Music changes. Boom, boom, boom. Get it, get it. Shake, shake. Yeah. And you start twerking your little ass. Yeah. Is this like the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, though, where they don't pay you well? I have no absolutely. idea. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, anybody who performs regularly at an NBA, NFL, MLB, or NHL game, they get paid it's like fifty dollars a game or something like that. They don't right. do it for the money. They no, get, you do it because to go to the game. Free tickets. Greg, wouldn't yeah. you love Charlotte to go to the Jones game? To <laughs> I'm just imagining like I'm just imagining Tim Reynolds writing his column and looking up like, oh, the golden. Is that <laughs> what the hell's Greg doing down there? I, I'm glad you went down this path because that's where my brain has been kicking around. Everyone's like, Greg, you should go. We should get some good content. You should go. What if he makes the team? What if he? What if, oh, like, I think he'd make. What if the he's team? a great no. dancer? I think he'd be the captain. What if we're robbing because, people of your gift? Uh, uh, Get the I just chest. got the thumbs up from Carl. We are doing this. You're leaving after this segment. So, Greg, just wow. if this helps at all, Greg, they only perform ten games per season. There you That's go. That's about nine too many for me. <laughs> Does Greg have kidding? any sort of choice in the matter, Greg? I don't want to do it. No. You can leave here early, head mm. home, but just stop at this you place really? on the way there. What if they it dance is closer to Jimmy to home. Buffett? Yeah. Does that change the? Lovely Cruz. I'm a bad dancer to huh. any right. song. Chris, you know, I, any tempos. I feel I like this. this is a good opportunity to talk to, you know, some of your, you know, fellow dancers here about Fred Astaire and the like, where you the don't necessarily style. have those connection points here. Sure. It's, it's like a real life back in my day. You get to have that conversation. Everyone yeah. else is just a chorus of yeses, and I remember that as well. <laughs> this was a real failure a failure from the commissioner because he could have leveraged this to yeah, get Greg oh. the, the keeper rule <laughs> Oh, pass. that would have been. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and he would have done it. And said he was actively against me. <laughs> so you're in? Come on, content well, he first. Said quite the opposite. We'll put a clip well, out for the Greg on. Cody Show Twitter, too. Dan's out too. of town, so Amin is in charge. Amin, is Greg going to this thing or not? Uh, I'm telling you right now, I don't give a shit what's happening out there, what they're cutting up, what sueys they get coming up later. I need people to accompany him <laughs> to that tryout. Do we have? Do we have? Will four? the Heat allow cameras there? Are we just going to do this? Absolutely. And hope that I'll make the call. I'll call Spo right now. But Greg doesn't want to do it. Spo's the one to call. That's yeah. one. I'll call yeah, the, the one that go. gave us the list of centers that are better than Bam, whoever oh. that was. <laughs> if Pat Riley is judging it, I'll be there. How's that? Huh? Uh, uh, many people don't know that this is actually Spo's call. It, it falls under his responsibilities <laughs> as head coach. I think Pat is trying out. Is Andy Ellisberg giving him a scouting report? There's or, a budget, or? and look, you can yes. use this. You're a marquee name. Greg, you should leverage this situation because, like, football season's right around the corner. I don't know your situation with the bucket of death. I'm sure you have outstanding penalties still. God, you have some coming again? up. <laughs> maybe maybe you say, you know what, I'll go do this in exchange for nullifying two losses this season. This is a payoff. Hey, Billy, I've got an even better way of doing this. Greg, you know how, as Mike described, they start out wearing one thing and then the music switches and yeah. they take the clothes off and then they start doing a different dance or whatever. You can have a T-shirt underneath that says the Greg Cody Show. Mm. With Greg Cody. Wow. And so then when you open Sweet your shirt, time. everyone else has like a golden oldies yeah. shirt. You've got one that's self-promoting. You get followers and listeners and subscriptions and likes and downloads immediately. Yeah. If I made the team, I would insist on that as a, as a point, when? as a writer in my contract. When? When you make the team. Uh, Chris, do we have... This is awesome, so do, this is happening. Do we have details of <laughs> what's expected? What's involved? Yeah. Uh, How long what? do I have to be there? Does he just it's go and dance? And that's it. start right, at I, noon. I, I Regis just, registration starts at 11. The right. auditions start at noon. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, required attire, a red, black, or white outfit. Mm. Dance or athletic black? Sh you have dance shoes on? <laughs> I have a black outfit. Okay. Yeah. And Check. He's, he's got athletic what? shoes, dance What's shoes. What's on your shirt, Greg? What is that? It's uh, a group I like. Toots, Toots. and the Maytals. 
Just you make, can talk about that. To steal the uh, saxophone. Uh, I'll dance with the other people trying out. 46 yeah. was my number. It, it um, says dance or athletic shoes with non-slip, non-marking soles. All mm. I have is my deck shoes. All right. Well, we'll just roll the dice there. All right. Okay. I, I'm no, not, no, Mar- you that's can not do marking. A kick? Can you do like a kick line, Greg? Ooh, Maybe great question. Conga line? I can, no, no, I can uh, deck, kick. Deck the shoes are specifically designed to not mark. Are they? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why they're okay. deck shoes. Oh, wow. What they do. They we go. require six golden oldies minimum to be booked for all appearances, but you may book as many as 20. Wow. They can perform two routines maximum per hour. Golden oldies will interact and enthuse your guests. Yeah. Golden oldies will sign autographs and take photos with your guests. Wow. Greg, that's right your up your wheelhouse, man. Come on, man. You've been waiting for this your entire life. Wait, so oh, this man. isn't even for the games. This is for, like, just appearances? No, I think this is for the games, but this is just the guidelines, and yeah. they're just, like, looking I think out for them. No, I think this is a side hustle. I think you can yeah. have the golden oldies out to, like, a birthday party. Can you I imagine? Did. Yeah. No, I think you're right. Like it's yeah. mostly games, but there can be other. There can appearances. be other right. appearances. Greg, Greg, you show up to this thing. Mike is right. You show up. Okay, it starts at twelve, but you're done at twelve oh five. You just show up and tell them you want to be on the team. You're on the team. Can I get a private audition so I don't have to Let's, audition before? We'll other send you oldies? there, and we, you know, we'll send Jeremy to. Uh, is Jeremy here? We're gonna. We'll, we'll. I'll call Jeremy. I'll get Jeremy to go with you. He's he's in on those with those heat people. Yeah, he knows the heat. And we'll just we'll figure it out. This I don't sounds like go, something I, Jeremy would love, by the way. Yeah. We should just dress him up like an old person. He should. <laughs> he would do it because he's theatrical. He loves to dance. But we'll send I'm him either. with you, and he'll be your your handler. I would only consider doing this if the Heat know about this ahead of time. Like they're not surprised because five people from the Levitard show are walking. We have into good relationship with them. Great. Roll the dice. It says here if the event is more than twenty five miles from the Kaseya Center. Mileage is to be paid by the client at the rate of fifty six cents per mile. Wow. Boom! There you go. Boom. This, this tryout seems like it's twenty five miles from should the Kaseya go- Center. Should Golden Oldies incur any miscellaneous expense, i.e., parking and or valet charges, it is the client's responsibility to cover such costs. Hmm. What about hip replacements? Trips that <laughs> trips that require air travel will be arranged on a case by case basis, so they might be getting you some flights. Playoffs. Who's out. flying the golden oldies anywhere? Well, no. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> All right, so it's settled. All right, oh, do we God. do we have are, do we have someone ready? I got a thumbs up from Carl. So all right, that's there all we I, go. That's well, all who's I need. going with me to insulate? We'll me. We'll figure that out. No, I want to know. Chris, you should have to go. I'm gonna do stay they, here. We'll figure it out. Do they yeah. just tell them to dance? Is it a dance till you drop kind of situation? Do they have to do hopefully routines? not. They give them. Re- <laughs> Greg, isn't know. that a thing from like the the <laughs> olden days, like the dance 20, 24 hour dance marathons, and like the last couple standing would win? Yeah, there used to be. You ever go to one of those? There used to be that. <laughs> Did you have them dancing until they dropped dead? No, I'm not. No. <laughs> there you used guys to be dance dark. marathons. Jess is right. <laughs> you guys, you guys' Thank algorithms you. are all messed up. No, I was just saying like until you tap out or whatever. Or, or, tap or, or, out. Or do they give you routines? Is there a routine that you, you got to do? That's what I would like to know. What am I getting myself into here? What I'll, do I have to do? I'll keep reading. Well, it looked like on the flyer there was a prep session last week that we oh. may have missed. So I, I fear that the other contestants will be showing up a little bit more prepared than leg Greg. Up. Literally. I, I, I trust Greg, his ability to think on his feet and learn on the fly. This is, if anything, <laughs> he's proven over the years that he's an adaptable human being. Yeah. Well, you give him a set of circumstances <laughs> and he'll is, get used to it. I'm so happy this is happening. You have to guarantee <laughs> me that there will be no media there. Well, because you'll if, be there. If well, Ariadne from NBC6 <laughs> is there right. and I'm on the You're 6 out. o'clock news right. doing this, <laughs> yeah. it will be mortifying. It's Will, will Manso. <laughs> Great name choice. <laughs> no, I can guarantee Ari will be there. Yeah. Yeah. And Will Manso. What, what else is Ari doing? I, mean, I will tip him off. No, please. Don't. <laughs> please. <laughs> no. <laughs> don't you dare. Because Ari would show up. <laughs> he would. <laughs> <laughs> and he's been tipped. No, Greg, we should make a bargain. If you he'd go show up today... without being tipped. So. <laughs> <laughs> now he might be sixty. Maybe he's dancing. If you go today, you may we'll do this deal on Dan's behalf. Dan will do this when he turns sixty. Mm-hmm. Okay, oh, you do it today. I'm deal. gonna hold you to that next year. Okay. Yeah, I like this. Next uh, year, <laughs> deal. <laughs> this is the old wimpy from uh, from Popeyes, right? I will gladly pay you for a burger today. That's a, that's <laughs> With two burgers tomorrow, whatever. However, he says. I'll gladly give you two dollars tomorrow for a burger today. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's good, how it good is. reference by uh, I mean. <laughs> Thank you, Christopher. You do have to promise me that the Heat will be forewarned about this. That we're not just no. showing up. I already. I'm texting Jeremy right now. He'll talk to his people. You'll be fine. Hmm. 
What if because he? Because I don't want to disrespect that. If the worst other case, they don't let you oldies. come. Like we're not going to. But if they say no, we will listen you're, to them. You're not by doing it this way. You're honoring the. You're going to go at eleven. And yeah. Yeah. You're not demanding yeah. you make the team. You're right. going. You you're, followed you're, my instructions. Right. Right. The be optics on the team. Yeah, right. the you optics would have been bad if you did what I suggested, which is just bomb in and use your fame. But no, you're doing this the right way. Greg, you're showing that you put your pants on one leg at a time, just like everybody else. I don't though. I put my pants on two legs at a time. Do you? Yeah, I do. Sitting down. You sit down and do it. No, I. Do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. And, and one, it has to be exact. Right. Like one can't. One leg, pant leg, can't be leading by more than three inches. They have yeah. to be even the what entire time. What if one time? leg gets right. caught in that thing with yeah. like the shorts? That happens. Yeah. 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 Especially with the a scene. new pair of uh, pants. So you I, start yeah. over. I had Christopher and Michael holding either side of the pants, and then you from a platform <laughs> above jumping down it, <laughs> That'd be landing. Good. That might work with the uh, big fat legged uh, bib overalls or something. Hmm. I've never worn a bib over all of my life. Really? Why my not? My dad used to wear uh, bib over. Wild Bill? Yeah. Mm, no yeah. kidding. Oh, yeah. Wild Bill? Wild bib. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? Oh, oh damn. I, I, listen. That's a good laugh. Until he drops. Get it out. Wild bib. <laughs> <laughs> Wild yeah. bib used to wear them for work purposes or just a fashion? Just for fun. Really? Yeah. Shirt or no shirt? No shirt. Really? No, oh, that's kidding. how you do it. No, he wore a shirt. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Flannel. Straw hat. That's Red a chafing flannel. nipple nightmare with no shirt. Yeah, we don't, uh, we don't like the no shirt look under any circumstances. <laughs> Ever? No. I shower with a shirt on. No, you don't. Yeah. No, I do. <laughs> Get out of here. No, I do. <laughs> in your pool. <laughs> well, I wash my hair in my pool. Yeah. Right. And, and then, and and then, then I'm usually shirtless, but not always. Then transition to the shower, put a shirt on, nice fresh shirt. That's right. Take the shower, rest of the shower. <laughs> Pants on, two legs at a time. Yep. yep. Chris, what if you're the golden oldie Michael. that has to like lift up the, the shirt to show your belly? That ain't gonna oh, happen. No, no, wait, that no. that, that, that is, is a, a move. That is a thing they do sometimes. You yeah. have such a marquee belly button though. You do. Oh, it's, it's a draw. It seems like a mean knows the full routine. Yeah. How 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 well are you familiar with this? I've route? watched eight billion Miami Heat games and it feels like the Golden Oldies are at every game, even though I know that's not the f- the case. Uh, look, they are a well oiled machine. Now, Greg, I'm gonna tell you right now, they it's the Miami Heat, so they don't like the blade of grass that sticks up the wrong way they mm-hmm. want everybody moving in unison mm-hmm. so you're gonna have to show that you can conform a little yeah. but there is a way to be a star within conformity don't let people tell you that that means you got to be bland and uniform you can still pop while still going with the flow i i assume that the people auditioning today would be newcomers right like their first time Oh, they do, probably do they, make veterans re-audition i would i would ooh, guess well that's what other I mean, cheer squads do do they yeah. No Wait, idea. do you get past the cheerleader. first cut at least or something? Like, there's got to be no. some. Wow. You know, you I, I first know round by. So you made the team last year. You're starting from fr- You're starting from scratch this year. That doesn't seem right. That doesn't seem fair. I at feel all. like there's politics involved in that, though. You know, well, what I mean? like you have to try out. But guess you know. who's good at politics? Who? Gregory Cody. Wow. Hmm. Look GPC. at that sheet. Seven votes, baby. Greg, if you had to do like an audition to one song and it was like your signature song and like your signature audition dance, what song would you choose? Um, maybe King of the Road. Wow, that's uh, a good one. Sailors for Lawrence. <laughs> dance to this. <laughs> to let 50 cents. <laughs> what are you dancing to this? I don't know what I'm, I don't have a shimmy? dance move. It would seem that the music you like to is not necessarily dancing friendly. Oh, yes, yes. it is. Thank you, Billy. No, it is. It is? Okay. Oh, yeah, they, I'm wrong. They waltz and they, they kind of ballroom dance. doesn't listen to that, guys. He's, he listens to stuff like he's wearing a, a Tits of the Maytals shirt right now. Like, he, he's he's got He's got a, a deeper catalog. He's not listening to chamber music or it is true. polka. It is true. Mike's right. <laughs> Oh, he, he's a hip hop fan. You, he likes Beck. Like he's got rhythm. Why are you getting so defensive? Because of he's got yeah. like because yeah. it's just I'm what you're loser, presenting baby. is what you're presenting is just not true. Uh, sorry. He likes LCD sound system. He, he yes, likes music with like some eight oh yeah. eight oh eight North American scum. Uh, you're welcome. This is very exciting. I mean, you're going to be a golden oldie. I mean, we hope not. No, no, <laughs> we, no, we hope no, so. no, no. You have to, you have to try your best. Don't go out there and tank it. Don't tank it. Like, oh, if Greg's going up there, he's going to try his best. I mean, what's the point? I mean, right? what? Well, how can we incentivize you to try your absolute best? What's an incentive you'd like? 
I I wish I knew more about what I'm getting into. Like, am I just in a line kicking my leg with other oldies, or am I doing a routine all by myself? Like, just well, we've established that you don't like being all by yourself, right? You want you you hide on the dance floor is the right. way you put it. Yes. I think there's a way to make it work though with a dance troupe, because they usually put the best dancers front and center, and as you move further to the back. Those are the weaker dancers back there. Mm. So I, I'm going off all my golden oldies experience watching all these Miami sure. Heat games. So don't think that, like, hey, if I get on this team, they're going to put me front and center, right. and then I have to lead this thing. They hide you. They so there are bad you. golden oldies. You're there are ones that are not as good as the best ones. The course, best ones are right. really good. That's reassuring. It's like bench players on an NBA team. Yeah. yeah. I mean, right. So the best ones are probably, like, former uh, Rockettes at Radio City Music Hall. Or just people who love the, the art form. Yeah. You know? Mm, that ain't me, babe. You make your demands, Greg. You tell them where you want to play. That's it. You know? <laughs> I want this spot. <laughs> if you make the team. If you, well, you, he's going to make it. But you got to try. I feel like I'm talking to my kid right now. No, like You can't I, just go in there with a defeatist attitude. You got to go in there and try. You know, I, uh, inherently, I am going to be embarrassed and embarrass myself, but not willfully. Um, okay. Just by lack of dancing talent. Okay. Mm. You know, we can go. we practice a little? Yeah. We've done this before, but let me see your belly button. Side. Stand up. Get a little practice in. Dude. All right. Dude. For the audio Dude. audience. The only dance move I have is. Oh, yeah. 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 That's a signature. That's a good one. Do the thing with the tail. The tail. The tail. Yeah. tail. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's there good. Go. Hey. Do now that. drop it down low and twerk your little ass. Is there a sprinkler in there? Anything? I mean, a little side to side. You know the sprinkler? Lawn mower. Hey, that's yeah. good. Man. Yeah. You're fluid. He's, give us a kick. You've got a good gait. Well, don't, don't, no, no, don't give him, don't give him all the goods right now. You got like a Michael Jackson kick in you or that's something? It, I'm don't give him the cow. What's the, what's the thing milk. Snoop Dogg does? Let's see. I, I, you don't want to see it. Walk. Don't, yeah. don't see it. Walk. I don't see Walk. They, they do do that though. They shouldn't. Well, guess what? <laughs> Just try it. Go 2024. What? Keep going. Do the I'm gritty. Out of, I'm out of moves. You what go, is the thing, Do the gritty. You, I know you know how to do the gritty. I've oh, seen that a boy. All right. Yes. yes. Greg, Black, teach Black, me how to Dougie, Greg. <laughs> Black Beetle Challenge, go. I don't know how to do any of that stuff. What is the gritty? What is, what is the gritty? What do you think it is? Why don't you do what you think it is, and then we'll say yes or no. What? Is that it? Yeah. That's the gritty. There you there go. You yeah. go. Yeah. Nailed it. That's the gritty. That's it's actually gritty. not It's like the high's been removed. too small. <laughs> Soldier Boy, tell him, Greg. All spent. That's all my material. See, I don't have to audition now. Just send that tape to the Golden the Oldie organizer. Superman that O. So, before... I'm wait, winded. What, what time is the audition? Noon. And it's across the street. It's yeah, not. It's, it's in Pepper Pines. Pines. It's in another oh, county. I mean, so, we're doing it, though. We're committed. So, so I already got, see Danny with a backpack on. He's so he's got to leave really? fairly soon. Wow. No. Danny does always have a backpack. It's a, what time do I have to be there? 11 is when the registration starts, and but just leave now. how quickly can I leave? You're going to leave after this segment and what? go. Well, Greg should have someone register well, for him, I think. Well, hold on. If it doesn't start till noon, can I get there at like 11.55? That's yes. a great question. Yeah, well, we, wanna get, we, wanna yes. get, we want you to get there around 11.15, 11.30, and we can like go check in with you yeah. and Set get the a scene. vibe check. It is important right. for you to politic also when you get there. Right. Yeah. You get there five minutes before, then the other golden oldies think, oh, this man maybe, thinks he's above us. You need to go and yeah. shake some hands, in maybe the, find out who the yeah. judges are. In the 11 o'clock hour, <laughs> maybe you and Jeremy can get the person who's judging this, and we interview them and put a little pressure on them to just make you get on the team. That's yeah, a, that's a Jeremy thing. Yeah. I have an idea for you, Greg. Who does Chris have in the keeper league? Because I heard the <laughs> trade deadline got extended. So maybe if you go, you guys do a little... Hmm. You know. I got Chris Olave. I have... Hmm. Who the hell else do I have? Tyreek Hill. Nice. Sounds like a hand lotion. Olave. Okay. Ooh, uh, speak, You're right. Speaking yeah. of... It? Yeah. I have Olave. another. I have yeah. another song for you with Olave because of Puka Nakua. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wanted you to do Olave. Oh, Olave. Oh, yeah, we can work that. I, out. I we, wish part of this trial was hit. singing. You'd be a lot. Oh, if it, was. it could be. It could Go ahead, be. Sing. Olave. Now dance uh, while you're doing that. I don't know. You gotta no, dance. I can't, I can't do both. You can't do no, both. I'm that not, one's an easy dance. You just have your one hand on your chest. Oh, I kinda, like that. You kind of Christopher Walken. There he goes. Oh. Yeah, now you gotta sing too. Sing. Oh, love me. <laughs> I don't. I have no idea the words of that. Whoa. Song. That's the words. Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's all I know about it's, that there's song. a great Columbo episode where they're on a cruise. 
and the woman is singing the song while the murderer slips into the cabin and does the murder. It's it's a very good episode. The murderer wow. slips? Does he go, Hola, they, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> No, the cruise singer sings Volare while the murderer slips into oh, the room. Oh, silence. oh yeah. But you and, said slips. And then does whoa. the murder. Slip as in sneakily enters. Okay. Ah, gotcha. I love the idea of my dad getting there, ready to go, and they're like, sorry, sir, no boat shoes. No. Good. So then, then I'm disqualified from auditioning. Please Perfect. don't make marks. That's the both worlds. We, we have, have to be home early. Shoes. I mean, I'll, I'll do it barefoot. I'll dance barefoot. I don't care. What's Problem solved. What's going on on the Greg Cody Show this week? Uh, we have Mario Cristobal on, the uh, Miami Hurricanes football coach. He's unusually candid. It's a very good interview. Interview cuts, it, cuts out 20 minutes in. Just because it's my dad true. Had doesn't have a proper <laughs> Zoom. Yeah, and then we finished, the, we finished the interview on the phone. It was weird. Um, we The Father-Son Olympics are coming to a crescendo. Wow. And we are trying to settle on a final tiebreaker. Ooh, there was five, a tie? Five. Yeah, it's 5-5. Five, oh. five. We need a tiebreaker. Uh, I have a vote online. The categories are putt-putt. Go- this is a new and unimproved Dan Levatar show with the Stugats. Gamble on by DraftKings. Don Lebatard. And then that Stafford threw him 25 and 2. Oh, there's a brand new kid in town out of BYU. Stugats. They call him Puka. Puka. Puka Nakua. His quarterback is not named Tua. Yeah, yeah he is Puka. Puka. Puka Nakua. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugats. For those of you tuning in live right now, you just turned on the YouTube live stream or wherever you're catching us and you're saying, wait a second, it's a Greg Cody Tuesday. Where's Greg Cody? We sent him. <laughs> He's actually, he just left. He's on he assignment. Did. Yes. We sent him on assignment yep. to go try out for the Golden Oldies. He's complaining yep. like, where is this place? You had to drag him out of here. I mean, and he's just like, wait, I've got to bring my stuff. I'm not coming back. I'm like, Dad, this is in Pines. <laughs> he's going to fit in perfectly. <laughs> Can you imagine the back in my day material he's going to get out of that? Just being around other not people? Really. No? Is he going to be like the young whip- whippersnapper there? Or? Oh, is he yeah, the young but, one? No, no he's I mean, he's 70, 70. and no, no, 60's no. the age. Yeah. So. Oh, I can't believe you revealed the age. <laughs> I mean, he's. I mean, we've we knew about he was it. 69. We made jokes about it. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> or maybe I, that was just me. I just, <laughs> Jess has been making jokes. I feel less answer. certain now All that that was long. on air. <laughs> so we await to hear word from Greg Cody up there of how that process is going. Uh, a little bit later today, we've got two Sui categories. Chris, one of them is the ba- best back in my day. Yep, and because I thought my dad would be here, I didn't think we were be sending him to try out. But he did one this we, year. We had enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm honestly, there was what? there was ten this year. Ten total. Which, if you think about it, it's not that much. It's like one every five weeks. But wasn't but, were, were like two of them AI? <laughs> yes. It's less than one a month. You're right. I ended up cutting two of them. So like, there's eight nominated. Wow. So. I don't remember about. I don't are think we, they're. Are AI we going to listen to the full back in my day? No, I, 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 I abbreviate okay. them. Yeah, man, it's it's mm. curated. It's, it's about thirteen minutes of back in my days we have coming up later in the show. What's the other Sui? Best mistake. Well, worst mistake. Oh actually, boy, that's how we call well, it. This, Stugatz, are you best known for? Be, best I think dismissal? it's dismissal. I think Dan owns the mistake category. Dan's, I, I, yeah. I bring it strong yes. this year. Yeah, really, I bring it Ooh. strong this year. In the yeah. Yeah. Are there category. any better than Vince Wilfork? Or was that most that uncomfortable was that one. moment? That was uncomfortable last year. Uh, that's not okay. nominated this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Dan, Dan usually dominates oh, Dan, this conference, and Dan brings it this year. But I, I give him a fight for his money. Fight for his money. All right. That, did well, I say that? Did I not say that? I don't that know if you said that. I'm right. not going to lie. I watched. For, damn it. Yeah, run for his money. <laughs> There's well, another one. Fight for his life. I mean, <laughs> we'll add that for you. If you did that on purpose, life, it would have been right. great. I thought you were. I did. <laughs> yeah. I watched the best dismissal Suey category yesterday, and my honest to God reaction was, I need to get better at dismissals because I wasn't nominated for a single one, yeah. and I was just listening to Billy and Stu Gatz just crush it. And Mike, honestly, Mike, that was Mike unfair. swearing at uh, Mario Cristobal, Cristobal. for that not was, kneeling it down was yeah. a right. moment. Hold on, hold on. Bullshit. I did not do that. That was after an entire show of you guys browbeating me. Yeah. Put, it, put us there in that moment. I knew and you'd hate that. Yeah, I, like, I did. Unfair. I did. Thanks. And Jess, it was like minutes removed from me asking for Mario Cristobal to do something. Right. Jess, as a, I think we're friends. As a friend, I would yes. say, 
don't don't worry about the dismissals. Career wise, better not to get into the dismissal game. I mean, it's worked out well for me. Well, no, <laughs> until it, it doesn't. Yeah, just <laughs> Billy, you're I, on the right path. I had the same thought. Keep as you it straight also. and narrow. Yeah, Chris, um, just as like a a governor from here on out, if you're like that's really gonna upset Mike, don't do it. <laughs> just like don't don't put me in that spot. Just don't. But like, if you know it's gonna annoy you, don't happy, do that. So. I will I'm, say, I'm not Dan. I'm not anybody. I'm like, just I'm asking, please. Don't. Wait, Mike, are you saying that in the history of the show, we're approaching the 20th year, you have never done something knowingly that was going to piss someone off? No, no, no. I have. Right. And and if I were actually doing that in that moment, by all means, frame it that way. <laughs> but to frame it inaccurately is just total well, bullshit on this show's oh, part. Oh, wait. Being framed inaccurately, that should be a sui Since category. that's what we do is give full context yeah. on all these mistakes. I, I do. You know I, what you did. I, I, you well, know what you did. Don't pretend like you didn't. You don't know what you did. I thought I knew you ripping Chris Wall would be funny. I yeah, will, yeah, but I didn't. I will say this. Mike, oh, you <laughs> is that it, out the gates? You had me saying "f you," and you make it seem like I'm just saying to Mario Cristobal "f you." I didn't do wait, that. Wait, you, you didn't? I'm. This is. Hey, I'm uh, legitimately asking. Now I'm no, very confused. No, Did we replay the tape. I didn't. Mm. I didn't. And right. you guys know. It this. sounded like you. Yeah, yeah, it did. Did someone say something to you? Did like. Uh, what happened? You guys, you guys think it's all cute. I was, <laughs> Mike, I'll say this. I was happy. I was happy that it was included because it reminded me to talk about my Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets one more time. How you like them jackets, huh? Making people money, making Amin proud. Was there any part of you that wanted to go to Dublin for yeah. this game, Amin? Go to Dublin? No. Hmm. No. Why I, not? I, now you've gone too far. Yeah, now you've gone. No, 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 no. No, I, you know, I'm, I'm, look. I go to I go to one game a year. I've got to mentally prepare myself because, as you guys know, I'm a super fan who most of the year masquerades as someone who doesn't give a shit. So, in order for that one day a year where I have to actually project as my true self, my true super fan self, I've got to prep for that. I got to do a little bit of homework, got to do a little research, and then I go and I got to be surrounded with my friends that I went to college with because. They provide me with a lot of the research and information in order for me to present as a super fan I truly am before I go back to being the fraud that I am for 364 days a year. <laughs> Speaking of frauds. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> the U.S. Open's about to start. It is. Well, started. it started. Or it yep. started. Yep, started. Sure, there you go. Yep. Frauds. Mm -hmm. What did I tell you? And Yannick Sinner, the world number one, yep. is playing despite testing positive for an anabolic steroid. For more on this, we go to our tennis correspondent, Michael Ryan Ruiz. <laughs> this was a massive scandal, and it's got a lot of players upset. And a lot of players are upset because of a, a double standard. Now, there is precedent for players being suspended for a long time when they have this amount in their system. Now, to be clear, this was explained to me via Andy Roddick's podcast. Mm -hmm. The amount that was found in his system was less than a grain of salt. And the defense, so guys, correct me if I'm wrong, is while receiving treatment on a table, yep. Sinner had an open wound, and one of the creams used uh, as a topical cream uh -huh. got into his bloodstream, and it had a banned substance in and, it. And the trainer, his trainer, was using that cream to treat something on his own body, and it's like it allegedly like seeped through Yannick Sinner's skin, and so then he tested for this like infinitesimally small amount of this banned which, substance, which which is in the, like the Italian version of Neosporin, right? It has this anabolic steroid in it, right? But all this being said, on the surface and how we're presenting it, oh, okay, that that's good for Sinner. Like that, this seems this seems unfair if mm -hmm. he were to be banned. And the ruling was he's allowed to continue to play. However, it seems unfair if you're buying his story. It seems unfair if you're buying his story. There's a lot of circumstantial evidence that would suggest a lot of injuries that kind of correspond with some of the symptoms that go along with uh, this banned substance. And a lot of former players that have been dinged for similar amounts, wondering why the double standard. It's interesting. I mean, and then he did the thing. So I had no idea what they were putting on my body, which I highly doubt. I'm skeptical about that. And then he fired the two people who have been with him the entire time while he's risen to number one in the world. He fired uh, two people who are a big part of his team. I, I th That part I found very, very odd. By the way, uh, he had his case go before uh, a panel of three independent experts and two of whom were unaware of his identity. So they, they didn't even know who they were judging, and they found the explanation plausible, that 
the trainer had some on his hands and then they went in through the wound and, and then later on in the treatment session. But I'm with Stugatz, like, hey, man, all right, my bad. Like, it's a, a literally a microscopic amount. You going to fire me? Well, it, that's what he tested positive for, a microscopic amount. And there are people out there on the Internet theorizing, well, there are masking agents that, that could be at play, that um, this is the amount that they found, but it may not be the amount in their system. Also, leading to more circumstantial evidence is Yannick Sinner's rise to prominence to be yes. the world number one, the present number one seed in this. He's had a really good year. Mm -hmm. It's not like he came out of nowhere. This was a, a prospect that people had high hopes. He but was he building, really, yeah. But, but he really turned it on, probably ahead of where most people uh, projected him at this point. So you have this guy really ascend. You have... Uh, Injuries and circumstantial evidence mounting, and you have the fact that you have precedent with other tennis players uh, at being punished for similar amounts, and you wonder why is Sinner allowed to do this. But you do have to credit, as you did, an independent court, two of which didn't have any idea who he was, decided that he wasn't guilty of purposefully doing this. I like the idea, by the way, real quick, so guys, right. that, that the two that didn't know who he was, it wasn't that it was a blind taste test or whatever. It was just like, so this is Yannick Sinner's sample, and like, who the is Yannick Sinner? Yeah, it's like Greg Cody. Like, I don't pay attention. <laughs> they were tennis fans. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a, a big-time scandal, and there was a lot, of, uh, a lot of tennis players weighing in, and you have the U.S. Open going on right now, and he is the number one seed. So it, it is a massive scandal in the world of tennis. It gets down, I think, this is the interesting part of the story. If you're the number one tennis player in the world, if you're a professional athlete, mm -hmm. Aren't you aware of everything that's being put in and on your body? Are you telling me Sinner didn't realize this until he tested positive? Like he didn't know what they were putting on his body? I, I, I do think that you trust your trainers to adhere to, to guidelines. You're also asking them to not only know it, what's on the topical cream, every ingredient that goes into that, and if it, it's against the, uh, the rules, but also to know we don't know, like, what the I don't know what the wound looked like on his leg. It's possible that he didn't know that he even had a wound on his leg. Sure. But don't you think there's a conversation between player and team? Guys, here's the banned substance list. Don't put any of this on my body. That never happens? Well, I, I well, get... he, well it, by the excuse, it, was, it wasn't it was even going on his body. The trainer himself was treating himself. Yeah. And then this got into his system because there was some residue. Again, it was smaller than a grain of salt. It, 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 the idea is that like the guy was working on something else, hadn't washed his hands properly or whatever, and then started working. Secondhand smoke. Yeah, a little right. bit of that. Little yeah. bit a of lot that. of this kind of falls into that tainted meat plausibility. Oh, in that there are tainted meat. Two of my yeah, favorite words. There are <laughs> trace amounts in this, and it's a believable thing. So people are wondering, like, is this going to be the new? The new tainted meat this is excuse. The, this is the new, my dog ate my homework, right? Like, oh, my trainer didn't wash his hands. Which I guess, I guess then. I'd never heard this excuse before. And maybe the first time that I heard tainted meat, I kind of had a similar reaction. Like, I didn't know that was possible. Oh, okay, I guess. And then everyone had tainted meat stories. So I don't know if everyone's going to have open wound stories going forward. Well, the other thing is this this anabolic steroid that's in this Italian neosporin. Apparently, this ster steroid is an over-the-counter drug in Italy. It's not, you know, it's very readily available. So it's not like they went to some shady back alley guy to get this thing. And Sinner is Italian. And Sinner is Italian, despite a name that uh, doesn't, doesn't doesn't track. Portray, but That's why what? I wanted to, to make that clear to the audience, because Yannick Sinner doesn't seem like Isn't he Italian northern name. Italian? Um, I also, I, isn't part of the controversy, like, the... Um, they didn't make this public until after the appeal and everything had been settled. And a lot of tennis fans are irritated and annoyed. And a lot of players are annoyed that they just found out about this, even though it happened in March. That, I want that, to say. that is probably the biggest reason as to why, because now all of this seems far too convenient for Yannick Sinner. And the double standard isn't just in the punishment, but it was how the secrecy was upheld. Like, you can un you can start seeing where the mind gravitates towards conspiracy theories. New number one, uh, we just made a brand yeah. new superstar. We're losing all these stars in the men's game, and almost immediately you have guys like Sinner and Alcaraz.
does they, they ascend to just pick up the slack almost immediately. That's how you do it. And it's awfully convenient in the eyes of many. Now, Stu Gatz, I got some quotes for you here from several people. First of all, it's from Denis Shapovalov, a Canadian player who's scheduled to play in the first round on mm-hmm. Monday, where he played yesterday. Different rules for different players. I understand why he would say that now, and think that. Nick, yes. Nick Kyrgios, we all know Nick, know and love Nick Kyrgios, yep. Miami Heat fan. Ridiculous. Whether it was accidental or planned, you get tested twice with a banned substance, you should be gone for two years. What, two years? As I like the Nick Kyrgios dismissal here. Right. And then this is from Sinner himself. Obviously, it's been a very tough moment for me and my team. It still is. It's quite fresh, everything. I also know who is my friend. And who is not my friend now? <laughs> because my friends know I would never do that. Stugatz, do you like Kyrgios' extreme dismissal? Sedano-esque, if I, if I may. Yeah. Remember when he tried to ban Rudy Gobert for I do co- remember. causing COVID? Yeah, for life. Yeah. <laughs> or do you like Jan Sinner saying, hey, at least now I know who's on my side and who's not. I think when you're sinner, that's one of the things you have to say because you're trying to convince everyone that you had no idea. This was an accident, Mm. so you have to say. That's one of the staple things you say. It's kind of like a hot take, right? Yeah. One of the things you have to say is you should be ashamed of yourself Uh or he had the audacity, right? Those are keys to hot takes. That's the key. That's a counter. Yes, yes. Okay. What sinner is doing there is one of the keys to – Hey, I did it, but I didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I like Curios because I do think, first off, the rules should be the same for every player. They really should be. Those kind of rules, okay? If Within a team, if one quarterback can fall asleep during the quarterback session and the, the backup can't and the backup gets, you know, gets waved if he falls asleep, I understand those rules being different. But these are general rules to the sport. Right. And so I am with Curios that if he indeed tested positive, and he did, Twice. he should be suspended for longer. Yes. Wow. Yeah. All right. We have the uh, Raheem Mostert interview that's coming up a little bit later. Uh, So before we do that, just to tee this conversation up, this Dolphins-esque conversation, Billy, you want the media to stop doing what with regards to the Dolphins? What I want them to start doing? Just like uh, let's drop the Brian Flores to a thing if we can. Like we got that. You mean I, the I, thing I that this show started. Yeah. yeah, the problem that we started. Let's uh, let's kind of put that to rest if we can, because I feel like now every time Tua talks, they just ask him like follow ups on Brian Flores. Dude, but isn't this our like we ran with? Oh it for yeah, a week, no, it's a hundred percent. And now we're fault. telling people it's too much. I'm just saying, too like much. you know, let's uh, let's not uh, continue this distraction that we ourselves caused because yesterday they asked Tua like follow ups because then Brian Flores commented. So then, like in a perfect world, it's like okay, well. That's the end of that. But then the journalists decided to journalism, mm-hmm. and now they're doing follow-ups in Tua, and I feel like this is going to be continuing to be a thing. So here's what Tua had to say yesterday. You mentioned in your comments to Dan how he was highly critical of you through that process, mm-hmm. and yet there was, I think, somewhat of a surprise that he made the change when he did. Why do you think that change to bench Ryan and insert you happened if he was so down on you? It's a great question. Um, I'm not going to answer that truthfully uh, right now, but um, I think I know why. But I won't, I, you know, I won't speculate or give anyone any speculations um, on that. You know, wh- whatever you know, you want to create to think, think, think that. But other than that, I think that'll just stay here with the organization. So he did learn his lesson a little bit. He oh, is done telling. Him. He is done telling the truth. That I mean, does seem it. like yeah. he's like I saw what happened last time. I was really honest, so I'm just gonna not this you time. S- do you see the body language difference with you guys? Arm around Chris, legs sprawl. If I was there playing with my drawstrings, he would have answered that. It was question. a comfy couch too. I mean, <laughs> he was I, all I, stiff. I guess he kind of diffused it, but there, no. are, there are ways. There are ways to answer that question to further ensure that you won't be asked similar questions. That door's still open. Yeah, but that's not our fault. That's his. Yeah, no, well, that's what I'm saying. He, he left fault, the door open. Well, ultimately, it's our fault yeah. for starting the problem. For Billy, asking a question? But, like, he, he went into that interview with intent to answer that question honestly. Right, but Billy, you're saying you want journalists to stop asking him about Correct, this. yes. Okay. I want journalism to stop in this I think he had a chance to end it right Let's there. Let's just focus why, on the football season that's about to start, why please. Do you, why, do you, why is that? Why do you – what's the – this is interesting. No, 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 no. You're what's interesting it? is winning a playoff game. <laughs> None of this nonsense. You don't want any distractions. No distractions. 
blinds. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put those blinders on. Let's get focused up on this season. Right. If the Dolphins don't play well, are you going to blame Dan? Ooh. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, that feels like a no-brainer. Yes. Ooh. It's it's got it's got to be Dan's fault. You know why I know it's Dan's fault because the question asked, they didn't say on the Dan Levitard show or, or when in Dan that interview. Asked you. He said when Dan, Dan yes. there's one name. Like well, it's, here, like it's Selena. Here's the share. Selena. Here's the uh Gomez. Here's the issue Thank that's you. confusing is uh according to Stephen A, Dan was a Dolphins plant. Yeah. Right. Yes. So if Dan was a Dolphins plan in this situation, do we blame Dan or do we blame someone from within the Dolphins organization for throwing off this season? Yeah. Is so is Dan? Hold on. Wait. Is Dan a pawn in a grander scheme? That's what I'm wondering. But and who is it? Who planted him? Who who planted him? Well, Roger Goodell. We, I thought hmm. we did that, the whole thing. It started that? with the Josh Norman hunt. And no, but, but if you believe what Stephen A. is saying, I would I think, Billy, this is the way it goes down. Someone from the Dolphins would ha- or to his camp would have to reach out to Dan. That's the way I it I think we work. have this all backwards. Remember when David Sampson said that the thing he hated the most when he was the president of the Marlins was when the other teams in South Florida were successful. Do we think that Pat Riley wow. has now infiltrated wow. Dan's brain is, to get the Dolphins yeah. to be worse so that people wow. will be excited about that the heat again? Wow. That's a great theory. Oh. This is how inside jobs happen. Yeah. <laughs> We're looking in the wrong place. We're looking at the Dolphins. We should be looking at the Heat. Yeah. Wow, and he's known to carry water for the Miami Heat. Yeah. Yes. That's a good point. Unbelievable. It was right I in front of us. I just blew this thing open. It was right in front of us the, the whole time. time. Yes. It was another offseason where they struck yeah. out. Yeah. You feel like the end of the usual suspects where he's looking at all the yeah. stuff on the yeah. bulletin and board. no one's talking about how Cole the Swider got away. struck out. It's amazing. Now we're just sending my dad. Yeah. <laughs> There, <laughs> number one Dolphins guy is going to the mm-hmm. Heat. Do we put him Golden in a losing Oles. spot? Dude, I, I kind of feel like no, quite the opposite. Okay, he's in a position of power. All now. right, I feel better. Now. Yeah, but he's also a pawn. The yeah. spot's irrelevant. It's just a just look over here. Look over here. We're all pawns, don't you see? <laughs> put it We're on all the in this. Pawn stars. Are we did all pawns? Heat, <laughs> did the Heat put that thing on my social media so I would see yes. it, so that I would send my yeah. like? Now I'm feeling like I'm being played. Yeah. Who mm. gave you the drawstrings? Damn it. <laughs> it's like a gift on the Miami. The bald guy from security. <laughs> the fixer. Can I be Chumley? <laughs> Bernie was in this studio a few months ago. Which Bernie? Oh, mascot. the mascot. 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 Yeah. What, what other one did you think I was I'm talking? in too deep. I've already said too much. <laughs> I've already said too There's much. There's another Bernie. Bernie. Kozar. Pat Riley was inside Kozar. Bernie and whispered his instructions to Dan so there'd be no paper trail no text trail. <laughs> I, I thought it was odd that he had Gucci loafers on. Yeah. Parmalee? This is all making sense now. <laughs> You're going to go into Buffalo <laughs> with Bernie Parmalee? Uh, I miss Greg. Wow. It's all, <laughs> it's all coming together, folks. <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, Mike, I have. Uh, there's no way to transition out of that, but I, I have an uncomfortable amount of money on the Hurricanes this week. Oh boy! Don't put that on me. <laughs> for for just this game, yeah. don't don't put that on me. I, am I think I've been. You. No, you sold me. Been doing. You, do- I, you How- keep saying that I've sold you. I think I've been like super chill, and I actually think Saturday is going to be a close game. Mike's made me nervous for UM on this because he's talked about how it's like the most important game in history. Like he, I'm not even a diehard UM fan, and I'm nervous for you. By the way, I saw an interview with Steve Spurrier hit. Um, YouTube, and he said that this is the most important Gators game since 1988. Ah, classic old ball coach. I mean, (laughs) no, but Mike, I am nervous because combination, okay, you have sold me on Cam Ward. You have sold me on how good the offseason has been. I'm just saying, you've told me they're talented. Yeah, I mean, Cam Ward's a proven commodity. I don't need to tell you how good Cam Ward is. You watch him at Washington State, and it's been a good offseason in talent acquisition. A lot of people have – They've been the, the the popular pick to win the ACC. Greg McElroy, I think, does a great job with his podcast. Very insightful. He picked the Canes to win the ACC. Yeah, there's a there's a, a lot of hype. But what I would say is, there's a heavy public road favorite. And two years ago, granted, they had uh, an NFL quarterback under center. Billy Napier beat uh, a Utah program that was humming. Yeah. Because of that atmosphere. It's one of the best atmospheres in college sports. It's and great. Yeah. The longer that Florida is in that game, if, if say Damian Martinez runs 60 yards, first snap, then we're good, right? But you give that crowd a reason to believe, and no Miami players have really experienced that atmosphere as a collective, as a unit. 
this is quite the jump up for a team that has been disappointing over the last few years. And, by the way, a team and a program that has never missed an opportunity to miss an opportunity. They have – They have. anytime there's been like six seasons over the last 20 years where they've entered a season with lofty expectations and been a, a vogue top 10 pick, and they always disappoint. 2017, they – they were a miraculous team, kind of a, a bit of a fraud, but no one had high expectations for that. So they, they always find a way to disappoint. If if I weren't so close to it, the money that you do just on principle, the the, the bet that you place is the home dog Florida in this spot. Now, Stugat, you said you made a massive bet. How massive of a bet did you make? A lot of money. Hey, you don't ask someone that. No? Kind of Kane, Kane's that mi- it's Kane's minus two on the road. It's 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 a combination of I do believe in what Mike is saying about the Kane's roster, uh-huh. and I don't believe in Napier or the Florida Gators. Like That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. I think they have a lot of question marks on the right side of their line. I think Mertz is probably underrated. He, he's been a good quarterback for them, and he plays within the offense, probably a little conservative, but that'll play. If they make mistakes, then the momentum can get running. But I – I think that everything about this Miami Hurricane season really hinges on that game at Florida because the the schedule certainly opens up for Miami Mm-mm. if they win this Mike, one. Mike, I got November second circled on my calendar: Miami versus Duke, Manny Diaz revenge game. Wow. wow. Stu Gatz, this is my favorite time of year. I am such a damn huge fan of the Sueys. I thought you were going to say football. Oh, that too. Mm-hmm. The Sueys and football come at the same time every year. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Like, yeah. we look at the NFL season as the start of our year, mm-hmm. so the Sueys are kind of like our year in review leading into the new football it. season. Our fiscal year end, but there you Sueys. Go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is, it like an, is it like an award show that's out there that I can compare it to? It's like our Oscars, I think. Oh, is that it? Yeah, yeah. I've heard, yeah. I think I've heard that before. <laughs> so what point does a Sui cease to be eligible for t- this season and become eh, eligible for it's next a, year? You know, there's a blurred line. But, for instance, my dad made a laugh mm-hmm. in the first hour that I have. It's the first nominee for next year's Sui. Wow, oh, okay, absolutely. so that's 2025. Yeah. Right and, the, and the mistake Chris just made in the last segment right. is going to be the first mistake. Damn it, I didn't write on that one down. Can Joe yeah. Mauer be in next year's dismissal? Sure. Or? Okay. Good. By the way, not my fault. One of my uh, workers out there. Oh, wow. wow. Nothing says great leader. Wow. <laughs> oh, my workers. I got out of there because I thought it was just me <laughs> overlooking it. He's just like, I didn't, I, I cut wow, that Wow, Dan's out of town and we're still throwing people under the bus here. We learned it from watching you, Dan. I was proud of him. He came up to me and was like, my bad on that. I was like, Went oh, off me, my... coach? Yeah, he did. <laughs> and now I'm, the ball, coach. And now I'm shaming him in front of everyone. There's, There's fire, someone here but... that takes accountability? It was nice knowing Ethan. Uh. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> so we Don't got- bother learning his name, he's gone. <laughs> Worst mistake. And now, the Suey nominees for Worst Mistake. Poppy Levitard tells LeBron where to find the key. He's lousy, he's old, he's making too much money. But listen, LeBron, if you want to come back to Miami, yeah. the kid is under yes. the mattress, buddy. We yeah, love you baby. for you to come back. <laughs> We've always loved you. He's under the mattress? Too much money. But listen, LeBron, if you want to come back to Miami, the kid is under the mattress, buddy. We love you to, for you to come back. Why is the key under the mattress? <laughs> to break LeBron, into the house you want to come back there, to right? Miami, the kid is under the mattress, buddy. Roy Bellamy sounds drunk after the Florida Panthers win the Stanley Cup. All right, we have made it from Amber and Peck Arena. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Roy. We have made it from Amber and Peck Arena to the infield, which is a couple blocks down. Celebrate. We celebrate. Championship. We are going to celebrate a Stanley Cup championship. <laughs> Stephen A. Smith can't say Amin El Hassan's name. Oh, my Lord. I'm looking El, uh, El Amin Hassan. Hassan, rather. I'm sorry. Sorry to mess up the name. <laughs> Taylor Vipolis's first time on air. I think you're going to flop this. <laughs> I hope you don't. I could tell Chris Cody. Cody. Oh, no. <laughs> Taylor, this is your big shot, buddy. <laughs> this one's for Lucy. Doing good. I was Tory Taylor. Is, is just 19 son? yards away from breaking Johnny Pingle's season single season. Oh! No! Johnny I got Pringle. cocky. I got cocky. Johnny he did. Pringle. He shouted out Lucy before oh. it. Like, hey, this one's for you. <laughs> I got too cocky. All right. You wanna... We were all rooting for there you. you yeah. All right. Let's try it again. You want to start from I the beginning? I should have picked a shorter stat. 
Boxer Terrence Crawford has been constipating his future. What do the next few years of your career look like? I don't know. I don't know. I'm taking it day by day. That's something that I've been constipating, you know just thinking. Constipating. 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 I love that. No, I love that. Yes. I said constipating. Yes, yes. He doesn't give it. <laughs> You've been having trouble shitting uh, about, no shit. uh, yeah, you give no shits about what your next two years look right. like. Amin El Hassan calls Dan Levitard dad. So, wait a minute, are you alleging that Oddball should be more award winning than uh, the sports business podcast of the year and the best baseball podcast of the year? Nothing personal with David Sampson? Dad. Oddball <laughs> operates outside of the purview of mainstream society in your award shows. Did you call him dad? Yeah, I heard, I, I heard him say dad, dad. Yeah. Which <laughs> feels like Freudian feels very appropriate. Bill Simmons doesn't know where the Florida Panthers play. Florida fans, settle down. You didn't know what hockey was until like 1993. You, you literally didn't have hockey. You've never won a cup. The average person who follows sports has no idea what city you're attached to. You're the Florida Panthers. Are you in Jacksonville? Are you in Orlando? Are you in Palm Beach? Are you, nobody knows. It's The answer is Miami. But li literally, most people don't know that. <laughs> Charlotte Wilder puts too much respect on Martin Scorsese's editor's name. Yeah, it's spending big. It's a big production. Also, let's put some respect on Scorsese's editor name, editor's name, Thelma Schoonmaker. Which I probably just yes, did not didn't respect sound like by respect. saying it eventually wrong. Thelma in confidence. C H S H. Don't do this. Okay. No, okay. So the Gilded Maker. Age. The Gilded Age. Charlotte Wilder's incoherent speaking. Guys, just would just light people's shoes on fire and we'd laugh about it. People just want to split each other with breach. Damn it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Go sit in the penalty yeah. box. Chris Cody has something that isn't sitting white with him. Chris is like Taco Bell. Just doesn't sit white with me. <laughs> white? White. Right. Sit right. White. Well. Angel, make the t-shirts. I want in the next 90 minutes. I want t-shirts that say, uh, sit white with me. <laughs> See? Even when Come I'm on. bad, I'm good. Chris Cody's bad English misreads a poll about the English. When it comes to proper English, who does it better? Americans or the English? 52%. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say the English. Perfect. Just based off of that evidence. English. Yeah. <laughs> The English. <laughs> well, it said the English slash British. So I was going to say right. the British. And... Got it. Yeah. Chris Cody's interesting country of origin for Nikola Jokic. Oh, yeah. -da -da -da. Damn, this is a good theory. Stockton, Spokane, Washington. Oh, <laughs> Jokic, Serbia. <laughs> Serbia. Serbia? Sorry, I made it a Z. <laughs> oh, man. Are you thinking about the, the tennis guy? Yeah. Zverek? Is that what you're thinking about? He has a jerk. Chris Cody's painter's taint. But I threw down some painter's taint, uh, the painter's tape, and I'm like, all right, let's 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 get let's get crazy here. The tape's there. Nothing bad could happen. I whipped that tape off afterwards. Paint everywhere. Just, and I, I get it. Billy's going to do, oh, was you made a mistake. But, hey, painter's tape. Be better. Uh, tape. You're it's having a, trouble with the word tape. Well, yes, it, you've tape. done nothing but eat turkey and candy and gummies for the last 10 days. It does hard. You've said painter's tape incorrectly four times. I think I said that. it incorrectly once. No, 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 definitely not once. You put an M in there. Painter's taint. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay. Chris Mad Dog Russo has trouble with Barack Obama's name. It's Obama. Michelle and um, uh, and, Bar and, uh, and, and Barack, if Barack Obama. <laughs> Chris Cody's technical FUs. They're having technical FUs. Issues. Technical FUs? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that a Freudian slip? <laughs> They've got me Lane Johnson. They got back Lane in his Johnson. Right. Yeah, there you go. Oh, but they undies. did. That was a technical FU from the video staff. I meant that how I said it. Chris Mad Dog Russo calls Billy Gill Mr. McGill. I love you, Stu. Got you the best. Is Mr. The McGill, mayor good to see of you. Radio Row. Chris Mad Dog Russo can't say jujitsu. How does Tom Brady, the magnificent, good looking quarterback, how did he lose his beautiful? <laughs> wife to a jazoo construct uh, to a in uh, how you pronounce it what's the word i don't even know what is it jujitsu jujitsu instructor i mean that's the whole theme of the night that she's going out with the jitsu instructor and poor tom all by his lonesome that's the whole damn theme of the night dan levitard gives the video team some odd direction the camera people just come on stugatz's face what dan levitard texts his food order to stephen a smith i have in my phone Stephanie from a Mexican restaurant. 
And so I ended Where up. Where is this going? I ended up ordering uh, tacos of fajita and margaritas from Stephen A. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Lebetard thinks he asks you God a question while talking to the Wu-Tang Clan. Would you God be kind enough to tell us uh, when when he looks at the entire landscape of hip hop, who the, the people are that he respects the most, <laughs> that he would put on the tier with Wu-Tang in terms of authenticity, credibility, durability? Who? You got it here. Oh, I thought but you got it here. That's Cap I'm sorry. We're going to edit that, right? We lie? I'm glad we lie. I'm glad we lie. That's my embarrassment. I'm sorry. I introduced you God before, and I thought he was here. You know, Newton Wayne is coming up here later. Not Wayne Newton, but Newton Wayne will be here later. Everyone had me making that mistake. I cashed the bet just now, but I thought it was going to be Stu. What was the bet you cashed? That Dan would up <laughs> get your money get your money that's my bad i'm sorry i thought he was i thought he was here dan's coffee ruins his voice why when billy showed up at one o'clock were you at what chili's? has happened to your voice were you just at chili's <laughs> going on stop eating in between oh my God. It's coffee it's, it's not food stop ingesting I feel anything. terrible now david sampson doesn't know what a wet willy is wet willies <laughs> Gateway prank. For sure. That's is that the one where you squeeze the nipple? No. 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 Is that the one in your ear, the finger in your ear? Yes. It is a <laughs> Clip that, guys. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> L. Duncan calls Chris Cody Greg. I hate this first sound. Oh, hey. What's up, Greg? That's L. Duncan calling me Greg in the Zoom before our interview started. <laughs> oh, hey. What's up, Greg? To make it worse, right before that, she's like, oh, Jess, Lucy, Billy, hey. Oh, hey, what's up, Greg? She knew Lucy? Yeah, she did. She never worked with Lucy. I've... Oh, hey, what's up, Greg? <laughs> Greg Cody responds to the off-air talkback only in his headset. Billy, somebody has written in here, I need part. way I more. I <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I just sense. said in his headset, haven't you been to all of them, too? It sounded like you were speaking aloud. My bad. <laughs> totally on me. That's 100% on me. All right. Yeah. Because I have what you mentioned. Right. I, too, like Billy, mm -hmm. been a, a, an eyewitness to all of the mm -hmm. fans, Stanley Cup uh, final wins. Stanley yeah. Cup mm -hmm. wins. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. Continue, Dan. <laughs> but that goes without saying. Right. That it couldn't happen. Well, now he said well, it. didn't. He, he didn't say it. Didn't say it. He said it again. Yeah, that Greg, was just why, Greg, again. Greg, My Greg, apologies Greg, sincere. Greg, why? Greg. Yeah. Greg. Lucy Rodine trying to say Arnold Palmer. I can say Mercury and Almond Palmer now. Tony! <laughs> what? <laughs> I couldn't get it. And and you were so was... confident. Against, Against the, the spread. spread. Tony, the guy. <laughs> Mike Ryan confuses everyone by inexplicably using henceforth in a sentence. Now, I do find this cute. I don't know how routine and commonplace that's going to be, especially henceforth, but it's not something he could have done just in his home country like that. It's, henceforth. It's fourth. It's, Thank you for saying that. I think we're be, all thinking it. What? It is going to be it is going to be at times like a circus. Henceforth. <laughs> <laughs> he dropped a Wills too earlier. Wiles. Did you? What are you doing? What are you, you go to you go to Tahoe, Witty you, thing, you hobnob know. with celebrities and you come back and speaking the king's English? <laughs> yeah, that was a little weird, I guess. <laughs> what, what, what happened? I don't know. <laughs> I could have said from here on out. But Dan, I'd like to be a with this microphone, especially with the co-host out, and I'd, I'd, I'd like to know my spots. <laughs> so henceforth, yeah, I deserve to be dragged for that. Charlotte Wilder doesn't know the Fonz, and it was the number one show in the land because the big star of this show was a man who was cool because he wore a leather jacket. The Fonz. He. The, the Franz. Fonz. <laughs> the German version, the Franz. <laughs> I did not think she, I did not think she can do better than the Foz, which was her initial offering. Wait. But then it became the French television show Happy Days with the Franz. <laughs> Charlotte Wilder. Big year. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Rookie of the year? I don't know. Arbor Parver was pretty oh, good. <laughs> Arbor Parver was good, but when she said Slade with Breach, 
I lost it. On yeah, that one. was a good one. <laughs> that was my favorite one too. I have that clip on a player. She was Gosh, just would just light people's shoes on fire and we'd laugh about it. People just want to split each other with breach. <laughs> Damn it! That. What? <laughs> she was definitely thinking Fozzie Bear. The Foz. The She's a big Muppets fan. The Isn't fall. that a Muppet? The yeah, Fozzie yes. Bear. Bear. I, I know Waka what she, I know what she was thinking. Oh man, what, what about? <laughs> Mike, I feel like they, they went too hard for you on, on henceforth. On henceforth? That yeah, one. I don't that wasn't really a mistake. It's not a mistake, but it's just like yeah. yes, using a big it. word yeah. around Chris Cody was my mistake. <laughs> henceforth? <laughs> Raheem Mostert next. Me and Chris want to live here. Yeah, this is, this, yeah. This perfect down here. Perfect right here in this little area. He's saying this. They're saying in the facility they oh, want yeah. to live here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Live no, right here the couch. Facility. Oh, yeah. I did just see something out there. It said mandatory weigh in at 8 a.m. That, yeah. that wouldn't feel good for me. But <laughs> I wouldn't love to do that it's every just, morning. It's just to make sure that we're good in regards to, you know, practice and everything like that. Because right. once you get out of practice, they want to see how many, how many pounds you lost because yeah. of the heat. So, you know. How much do you have to eat to not lose a bunch of weight in this heat uh it's not so much about eating it's about uh the fluids yeah. so like per every pound you lose you have to drink you know a certain amount of water to get gain that poundage back so <laughs> no thanks <laughs> you have to have some fluids in you man <laughs> we should have a way in at the studio <laughs> every morning <laughs> <laughs> we are here with stugatz's friend raheem mostert i think neighbor and surprisingly number one florida panthers fan yeah. raheem mostert yes. i don't know in the parade what were yes. you doing in the parade? You were in the parade. Did you get in the parade i'll tell you what i got i got really good at, at connecting with a few people and um yeah it was awesome we I tried to get in that parade y'all should hit me up y'all should we would have got y'all for sure <laughs> no, it was awesome, though. I'm, you know, shout out to the Panthers and, and everything they did this past year. Uh, it was definitely memorable. Um, I've been a Panthers fan for about, like, 11 years, so. Did you touch um, the cup? I did. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, fine. It was, it was a lot of Different fun. sports, so it's fine. That's, that's the I'm thing. That, My know. wife was freaking out. Yeah. She was like, Raheem, you cannot touch that yeah. trophy. I was like, why? She was like, um, well, do you know that there's a curse if yeah. you don't win it? Like, I'm if like, if you haven't won it yet, you can't touch did it. Did your wife know you don't play hockey? Yeah, yeah. that's what I told her. I was like, babe, it, yeah, we're okay. We're good. So, I mean, I think we're okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 11 years you've been a Panthers fan? I have, yeah. Because? How? So, my agent, Brett Tesler, he stays in, in uh, Parkland Golf as well. Um, and he brought me to my first ever game. And ever since then, I was just, I mean, I've always been around hockey a little bit you know even from the uh tampa team um and yeah that's I just, good we don't say their name i yeah, appreciate no, no, that no, we, no Hate just tampa guys. team that's Lightning. it yeah. um you but yeah panther fan man i know mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so yeah ever, ever since then i've just been locked in with the panthers so it's been pretty cool to see you find a home here. The idea that you had 18 touchdowns last year. I was offended on your behalf that the running back position <laughs> has been devalued so much yeah. that there wasn't everybody throwing all sorts of money at you this offseason. Because anytime a, a person has had 18 touchdowns in my lifetime, yeah. that person breaks the bank yeah. when they get to the bank. Yeah, That's yeah, it's a, it's a little it's a little discouraging. Um, but you know, I'm I'm an older guy now. Um, you know, they they want to put the the age tag on me, which is unfortunate. You know, especially what I've done. You know, I'm I was 31 last year, and you know, being able to run with you know 21 year olds and and you know just doing what I did, I I go out there and just play. And um, hopefully, you know, that changes in the in the near future with the running back market. But it takes the younger guys to make that happen. But older guys have to step up as well. So. Where along the path in your career would it have seemed most likely to you or probable that you would make a Pro Bowl and have 18 touchdowns? Man, honestly, um, I would have to say, you know, a younger version would have to be year seven, eight. I felt like that was like the per perfect time for me, but, you know, I didn't take advantage of the opportunities. I, at least I tried to, but, um, you know, just things were falling out, um, injuries and all that good stuff. So I'm, I'm just happy that I'm able to do what I've done, you know, at the at the time that I did, you know, last year. So. There can't be another story like that in NFL history, waived six times, 18 touchdowns in a Pro Bowl. Yeah. Well, also should have won or could have won a Super Bowl MVP. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if we would have gotten the ball. Yeah. You know, the, running, the, running, the running game for that game against the Chiefs in 2019, um, that was – that was it was keyed up and dialed for us to win it and you know we just strayed away from the the, the run game and you know we, we, we would have been super bowl champs for sure you don't get to surf here at all right mm -mm. 
there's no such thing just as the internet. you being able to... Who would surf here with to, the sharks, I mean? Come well, on. no, but I mean, he's used to waves. He's yeah, used to yeah. sizable waves, and he he loves the ocean. Yes. Yeah, yeah I, um, every year I feel like I'm always taking a trip to Hawaii, so I get my, like, you know, surf fix there. Um, this past off season, I went to Hawaii to support Tua and his foundation. He had a golfing event and he had his football camp. But uh, unfortunately, I didn't make the camp because I had my own down in, in um, South Miami. But um, went out there for the week. We left what Sunday, Sunday night, got in Monday morning. Um, and yeah, we were just me and my family hanging out. Um, and we had a couple of days of, of surfing. So it was fun. What was the uh, free agent process for you like uh, coming off of that kind of season? Um, at, at the beginning, it was a little slow. Um, and then things started ramping up, starting, you know, getting some talks just because I was still under contract with the Dolphins. But, um, you know, my second year, my last year wasn't guaranteed, uh, which would have made this year wasn't guaranteed. So then um, just, you know, went back to the table, started talking and uh, we felt like it was, you know, a deal that you couldn't refuse. So. Uh, but it was uh, disappointing to you, uh, not necessarily to come back here, it, but to to not have that season rewarded the way that I would have imagined at any time in a running back's lifespan, it yeah. would have been rewarded. Yeah, I mean, you know, then again, it happened to be the market, right? Um, everything is the market value, whatever the the market sets. It's it's on, you know, those those positions to to value um to be valued in a way that you know makes sense but unfortunately like you you mentioned earlier it's the it's the running back market you know especially given my age too so yeah i'm i'm 32 now but you're i feel you're not like, an old man no nah, i'm not given an old my man. age you're you just had 18 touchdowns yeah, you're not yeah. an old man wait, 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 does that bother you the running back market just the way that position is treated cuz growing up Dan and I watching like Emmett Smith those guys they got the ball yeah, and they got yeah. paid man yeah no nah, um you know i i feel like it's definitely changed these past couple of years, and it's unfortunate, but, you know, that's just the – in, in time, it'll get back up. I feel like it'll be more valued, you know, once the younger guys start to realize, hey, you know, I don't have to be – we don't run the ball like that, you know, back right. then. And and guys are getting – you know, they were getting hurt at some point, running the ball, you know, 20-plus times. But now it's such a passing league. These these running backs that are in, like, you know, I, I talk to Devon all the time, and I'm telling him, hey, you know – catch the ball out of the backfield. That's that's what's going to help your right. case, you know, especially when it comes down to, you know, those contract talks. So he's he's taking it well, running routes. You know, we're all running routes, and, and I'm happy to see that that type of progression right now for him. What's that running running back room like right now? Because it's a year in there. We haven't come off the season it's you fast. did. Devon <laughs> Achan coming yeah. off a, a season where he broke out. They draft Jalen Wright. Mm -hmm. So it's just like there's a balance between being teammates and competing with each other. Yeah. You know, um, I think the biggest thing, and in, in our coach, uh, Eric Stoosville, he does an unbelievable job in making it feel like it's more so a brotherhood um, and, and and lifelong friends. You know, that's, that's the most important thing because, you know, in this NFL world, man, it's – any given day, yeah. you know, you could you could have the best game of your life and you could be on the, the highest of highs and then something major can happen and then it turns into the lowest of lows. But, you know, you have to have your brothers that's, that's right there behind you. And I feel like with our running back room, we are the best running back room in the league. There's no doubt about it. You know, there's there's other guys that want to compete and say, you know, well, you know, so-and-so has this title. But if you go down the line of all the backs that are in our room specifically, each and every one, even even our younger guys, each and every one has made some type of impact in this league or will make an impact in this league um, when their time comes. So I just feel like this room is just tailored to what we do as a group and as individuals, too. Do you know where you're ranked in the NFL's top 100 players? Have you seen where you're ranked? Yeah, I did. What's um, the number? 60. Yeah. How are we feeling about that? Uh, that was too high. I felt like, especially what I did last year. Too low. Or too low. Too yeah, low. Too low. It right? was bold. I'll it's technically high like up if you yeah. go by numbers. Yeah. It is high. Yes, yes, it, yes but you, you weren't. You thought it should have been a better ranking. Yeah, better ranking. Just you know, I, I broke you know a forty year old record that hasn't been touched in forty years, and you know, um, to be able to break Ricky Williams' record. You know, I looked up to Ricky when when I was a little kid, coming from you know um, in Florida and stuff like that. So. To be able to break his record, that meant so much more to me um, than, than Mark's record, right? Um, but, yeah, you know, it, it is what it is. It just gives me more motivation this year, so. Who was the running back on the list higher than you that you were like, what the? Uh, well, I'm going to say with this. 
It was probably a couple. No, nah, it was. Uh, What's this guy doing up here? It's Christian, obviously, he's. I think he's just a, a hell of a bad. You were guy. good with that. You were yeah, fine with that. So there has to be a guy. He like, deserves it. You're rolling down the list. You're like, what the hell is he, he doing? Fourteen here? touchdowns. So you had eighteen. He had fourteen. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we tied twenty-one touchdowns total. So I, I couldn't. That's right. Even, and he led the league in in rushing. So you know, I, I talk to him all the time. We we bullied with each other and stuff like that. And it's it's fun. So, um. And then Derrick Henry, I feel like that's also another, you know, he, okay. that's, you're good with those well, two. I'm good with one. those But guys. who's the guy you're not good yeah, with? Yeah, come on, let's go. Uh, the rest, it sounds like. The yeah. rest. Oh, I don't know yeah. who's there. There has to be a name. I don't, really. know. I don't know who else Who's in there. the 50s? Kirsten, look that up for me. Yeah, I need, we need to figure that out. Because, you know, I I just see it as I'm the 60, 60th best player. You know, after what I did, I felt like I should have been lower. You know, in regards to that, higher, 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 yeah. higher. Yeah. Like we, we all know what we, we, we yeah. all know yeah. what we better than sixty. Yeah, yeah. 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 lower, but yeah. higher. Yeah. yeah, but you know, I'm just, I'm just happy and blessed, honestly, to make the list for the first time, and you know, it can only go up from here. That's how I see it. I know you, uh, you keep in touch with all the guys in San Francisco. You keep an eye on what's going on there. Mm -hmm. You love that organization. Mm -hmm. What do you make of what's going on with Ayuk right now? Um, you know, I. First and foremost, I don't know what's been going on with Ayuk um, and his contract, but you know, I I do definitely think he deserves whatever comes his way because he's he's always stayed quiet. He's never been, you know, the most outspoken one unless it's involved, you know, um, his contract issues and stuff like that. Um, and he's he's a hell of a player. I mean, the guy goes out there, he doesn't say anything, he goes and gets his yards and does what he needs to do. Um, I watched him when he was a rookie um, and, and talking with him when he was a rookie and, and just to see the growth, man, I just want nothing but the best for him because he definitely deserves it. Has money changed to a Nah, 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 nah. Money hasn't changed to him. What was he doing with the mic, though? Like, why did he grab yeah. the mic? Uh, he... <laughs> that was awesome. No, that was actually, like, you know, I felt like that at that moment for him, it was definitely, you know, <laughs> It's something that he cherished um, <laughs> because, you know, he, he didn't he's not a guy that talks a lot. You know, he, he's humble. He's the most humble human being you'll ever meet. You know, he he doesn't talk about what he has. He doesn't talk about all the all the fame and glory he's had. You know, he's just always wanting to work and get the people around him better. And for him to, you know, have that statement, uh, show me the money. <laughs> you know, we joke around. Me and T-Stead joke around <laughs> with him right now, right? Um, and and it's just all fun, man. It's just happy to see that, you know, especially what he's been going through. What's the confidence level with a guy like Tua when, you know, you have the criticisms out there of, you know, maybe not as accurate outside of the pocket, cold weather, we haven't seen him do it. Like, in the locker room, are we confident that he can get over all those hurdles that people put out oh, there? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, if you've seen what he's done, you know, in college and dealing with, you know, Alabama, his hip injury, right, coming back from that, um, and and then being drafted here by a coach that really didn't want him um, and, and then going – through that whole process to looking, you know, we get here first year with McDaniel and he has a stellar career and it's just been going up and up, you know, and his leadership is just unmatched. So this guy comes in and he wants everybody around him to get better. And that's something that you need. Um, and, and also he, he takes pride in, in his, his lack thereof of, of all the skeptic, you know, the skeptical yeah. things. Right. Um, and he just wants to get better each and every day and you can see it. Many years ago, uh, Zach Thomas talked about, I wouldn't fight Tim Bowens if I was the only one who had a gun. Uh, Jason Taylor said one time he threw a Coke can at Larry Chester and ran away because he was afraid of Larry <laughs> Chester. And one time, Daryl Gardner, or no, I think it was Tim Bowens and Mean Joe Green got mm. into it on the sideline and everybody was afraid. Who's the dolphin in the locker room that everybody's just a little bit afraid of? Uh, I mean, it's, it's hard because, <laughs> I mean... Well, you got Calais Campbell in that bad boy. <laughs> that he's, voice. He's six, oh, yeah. six, eight, and, you know, that's a grown man status right there. <laughs> you know, he's played 17 years in the league. I tell him that he's 44, you know, bust his chops a little bit. But when he speaks, you know, it has some validity. You know, that, 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 that man speaks from the heart, and he speaks true. And, and you can tell that that's, that, that guy's he's about the right stuff. And that's something I'd I, I line up with him. And if he has a problem with somebody, I'm 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 backing him up. But he's a friendly monster. Yeah. He's friendly. Yeah, but he's yeah, we're, we're you should see him on the field. You, <laughs> yeah. you, you see him I, when we break in the huddle, and you see a six eight giant on the other side of the ball. <laughs> you 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 you're like okay, yep. 
<laughs> I'm you notice that. These, I'm going to zip these up real quick. Yeah. Last question before we get you out of here. I don't think it's terribly insulting to be the 60th best football player in the world. Is there another list that's more insulting that you've seen? Because I know you track this stuff. You still you have the list of all the teams that have waived you. Yeah. You don't like that very much. Raheem, there's a top 15 list out, uh, right now, uh, top 15 running backs. And I don't know who put out the list, but you're not on that list. I'm not. I'm, yeah, yeah, you I, know that, right? Yeah, <laughs> I think it's about time for me to come out and say this. Whoever's making those damn lists is definitely, they don't know their stuff. Mm-hmm. That's right. Listen yeah. to the man. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It, just yep. because, you know, if, if I'm not even a top 15 back and I was a top 10 rusher last year, I mean, come on now. What are we doing? Yeah. Like, what are, mm-hmm. what know, are we doing? Yeah, yeah. You, you got guys on the list that, mm-hmm. you know, no offense, I think that every back in the league is, you know, superior and dominant in their in their own perspective ways. Mm-hmm. But, you know, for me, I feel like, you know, I, I should be in the top 10. Um, I deserve to be in the top 10, but, you know, that's – that's always fuel, and there's always this year to get even better. So let's go. You nailed the dismount, sir. Thank you for being on with us. Thank Your you, neighbors it. with Stugatz, have you yet met him at his clubhouse? He's promised to spend time with you. He I'm tends wait, to be I'm, a bit I'm of a waiting. phony. No, that's you're not waiting. fair, man. You're going to do that today. We but, spent, but listen, I spent time no, with your but, wife and your kids. We're out yeah, of the rain. You man. did. You did. We actually, you <laughs> know I, what? We we spent plenty of time on the on the chipping greens. <laughs> um, you know, he my kids were trying to steal a couple of his golf balls. Yeah. Um, and, I was trying to steal theirs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, it was, it was definitely a good time. But yeah, I did stand you up at the bar one time. I did. Yeah, I did that. we ain't going to talk about that. Okay, <laughs> no, I believe that. He's the king of that I one. just left him sitting there. <laughs> that yeah, that yeah. sounds like you. How do you assess? Is Stugat's game good? Golf game? How is it? You know what? He's... You he, don't have to be nice. No, no, no. Honestly, I, I saw I saw potential. Okay. <laughs> 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 I saw potential. I've always been on the green right from his house. Yeah, always. he's always been on the green. So, yeah, absolutely. Well, hey, man, I just want to say thank you guys. You know, I, I think that your guys' show is awesome. I'm more than honored to be on anytime. Y'all just let me know. Stu, you already yeah. know. So um, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Don Lebatard. I heard that as a woman faking uh, pain. I, I, I didn't think that sounded real. I really didn't, you know. It was not fake. It was in no way fake. Yeah. You can spot sounded... a woman faking it? Stugatz. Yes, I can, Jess. Expert. I've been married 40 years. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugatz. <laughs> I love the rejoins. I love the look on Jessica's face as she realized she was an unwitting pawn in one of the most obvious setups ever. Mm-hmm. Unwitting pawn? I'm the one that set up the joke. Moving on. You want to hear the rejoin again? I mean, no, nah. yeah, she's right. Yeah. <laughs> I thought about it. I know she's right. Oh. <laughs> she I knew she hiccups and i'm pissed back here wow. Wow. really whoa hold your breath swallow three times oh okay? jesus yeah there you or go that, or that or that or that that's how you do it chris scared her that actually might have worked that's how you do it <laughs> and 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 it was done perfectly because it was right in the middle of stugat's giving his bull advice what do you mean well i'm just saying like well he, she just hiccuped again it so didn't work damn. do you do okay. that to your daughter like you just lunge at her scary. i have done that before to my Absolutely. daughter actually <laughs> try this hold your breath and swallow scared three her. times okay I am telling you, it works every time. I'm telling you. 86% of the time. Right. It works 100% scaring my, of the time. Scaring my daughter is one of my, I, I enjoy that. Oh, all the time. One of my big things is, oh, it's bedtime. And so as we're starting to walk up the stairs, I sprint ahead of her. And she and then I go into her room. And so and I'm behind like, the, behind the I, door? I behind the door? Yeah. Am I in the closet? And then she like looks for me. And then I pop out and I scare. I do that when we come back from outside. Park the car in the garage, and I get out the car real fast, and then I, I get on the other side. And then as they're walking up the stairs, there's something <laughs> like, ah! Child fear. Yes. Cheer. I, I, I feel like that's like that's a, a, you know, a building block, right, to a great character is someone startling the shit out of you. Zagak. Right? That was quite the hiccup right there. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, the reason that I'm so annoyed right now is because when I get the hiccups, I have the hiccups. <laughs> For a wow. very long. Ah! Jesus Christ, I don't wow. like this. <laughs> Yo, it's very. Did you try it my method? Work. Did you try my method? It didn't work. It's four times. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's what it was. Wait, what day is it? No, it doesn't work. Wait, on what's Tuesdays. the temperature? What's the temperature? It's 88. Too Not warm. whistling weather. <laughs> too warm. Like sometimes I'll be in bed at night. And like Lee and I will be like talking, and then he'll make a joke, and I'll start laughing, <laughs> and then I get the hiccups, and then he's like, "Oh, f-. like the whole night's like it's a, it's over. Like you're gonna be hiccuping for the, for the next six hours. We're never gonna fall asleep." You have a very frequent hiccup. Usually, mine the the gap is so long 
that, that I you pre- think they're gone. Maybe they're gone, and then they're like, no, still here, still here. Yours are pretty. Yours are like a cartoon character. No, they're like super aggressive, and like they like my entire body like hiccups convulses. You're like <laughs> a cartoon character. See, like in the cartoons at the, uh, especially I'm when they're drunk. I'm not doing that on right now. Is that a 20 CB thing? Is that when in the cartoons if you're drunk you hiccup? Uh, uh, I said uh, you gotta. You know that's how the Dumbo. cartoon. Yeah, yeah. Dumbo. That first yes. sip of Coca Cola always does it for me. Yeah. That's if you drink it too fast. See, that's really? What it means. Yeah, because there's an air pocket in there. And I always choke on the first sip. Always. Why you go in too hard? Like too I'm like fake. the Tom Brady right. of doing that. Every time I take a sip of anything, <laughs> especially if I'm really thirsty, I'm going to be coughing for a little bit. Give me time. I want to ask you guys a question because I think we're all in a situation where you, no one here lives alone, right? Everyone's got someone that they live with. And every once in a while you're going to the store and they say, hey – bring back this from the store and you say fine and then you get the inevitable text of oh and also this i think my biggest pet peeve is getting that text after i've left the store oh the worst what do you do i get it all the time yeah you You say back you you just text and say i already left and i say i'm I'm almost home sometimes sometimes i'll have just checked out what if it's your fault though what if you texted do you need something and you just didn't look at your phone again no no you got in the car but the text was sent right away no i'm talking about the text was sent after the shopping experience has ended what if you're in line though you're saying you've left the store right Mm -hmm. what if you're in line though do you ever do the mid like scanning items like i'm gonna go get one more thing and there's people waiting and you're sprinting so you're up next right and there's Mm -hmm. a long line behind you and your significant other says hey i need this if i'm having tacos and i forgot sour cream i don't care who's behind me i'm running back to get that this this is what you do it depends on how many items you have Mm -hmm. if you have a shit ton of items i start loading them on the conveyor belt and then i sprint back to go get the thing you have time yes yeah but if i got all i had was milk and like oh the sour cream i'm not gonna what if the item is near the (laughs) chart good question actually this this is a valid point like if it's the if it's the aisle right closest to you then i sure i got time three hops that's the rule yeah really you can hop on one foot three times or foot opposite foot original foot again That's if you could close. triple jump to the item you're fine i love triple jump hmm. underrated sport do you, you have to triple jump back or you don't have to but right. it's encouraged you can long jump back <laughs> you know what i hate is these like cheap bags of chips in like i don't like anything my daughter's always like can i in like the conveyor belt right over oh, the conveyor belt the impulse buy they section. got the chips yeah. they got the gum they the got candy. the magazine Dude, my yeah. daughter's always wanting this stuff i don't i That's don't the point. like candy I, know, and I tell her no I don't like candy, right? I'm not a candy rock. person. <laughs> but for some reason, those impulse buy candies, they've never looked better, man. Right there, the Kit Kat, like the Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, all of them, they're like, hey, big boy. And I'm like, oh. That's what it's like going to Ulta because they have a mini version of all the fancy makeup by the checkout. Yeah. And for some reason, you can convince yourself. <gasps> oh, I thought you were cured. <laughs> God damn it. We're going to check in with, uh, we forgot about him, oh, Greg yeah. Cody. Oh. He's trying out for the Golden Oldies. Next. Holy <laughs> Stugatz. Yeah. I can't believe it. This is actually happening. Greg Cody, for those who don't know, we sent Greg Cody to the Golden Oldies tryouts for the Miami Heat elderly people dance team. Yeah, which happens to be at the place where I had Rosh Hashanah dinner. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we got Jeremy Taché live on location with Greg Cody. Jeremy, what is this venue? <laughs> This is unbelievable, guys. This is the Southwest Focal Point Senior Center Center in Pembroke Pines. Ah! Uh, it is Next it is full. Suis. the The parking the parking was unbelievable. We all had to park on the grass because there were so many people here auditioning today for the Golden Oldies. I was told that between a hundred and a hundred and fifty people over the age of sixty years old will be auditioning for the Golden Oldies today. Greg here being one of them. He's about to have a private dance lesson. Uh, with the coach to be able to sure that he, be able to be sure that he's ready and prepared. Greg, how are you feeling about everything that's going on today? I'm as excited as I can possibly be. I really am. It's uh, just a thrill. I feel young. I thought I you do. You, I'm like I'm not that old. Do you want to make this team? So, uh, no, it's good. Uh, I think he does. I think that what's happened here is he had no interest, and then the moment he showed up and felt as young as he looks in this group with the athleticism that he was showing off. We were in a back room before, and he was doing high leg kicks. He was doing dances like this right here. I mean, I think Greg is ready and excited. He's a performer at the end of the day. At the end of the day. Not at the beginning. 
but just at the end of the day, <laughs> right. I'm a performer. Well, That's luckily true. there, it is the end of the like day. June, I so. mean, <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. dinner will be served in the next 30 minutes. <laughs> it's true. We'll have the, the, the early bird special will be coming in soon, guys. I don't All love right. this. But this thing. is going to be great. I mean, if you guys want to follow with us, I mean, we could show you what this place is looking like. Well, hold on a you second. You want to see what this hold, room looks like? Hold on a second, because Billy has an objection, and I think I agree with it. Yeah, like, I don't <laughs> love the fact that Greg just kind of strolls in. He gets a private lesson with the coach who's, you know, I assume is going to be making some decisions on cuts and whatnot. He has a camera crew. Like, Greg's a big city slicker that's coming into this small town, and he's going to take someone's spot, which I'm not a fan of. You know, you would think that it was because of the Dan Lebitard show and all the cameras that Greg was famous, but actually I've heard three or four different people in here say, hey, is that Greg Cody of the Hee Haw 3? Yes. I couldn't believe it. They're, they really remember him <laughs> from, from the old days. It's yeah. amazing. I'm in favor of special treatment. I really am. I, you know, I think I deserve it. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the kind of guy who cuts in line when possible. The you face, know, that kind of thing. The face yeah. of entitlement, ladies and gentlemen, Greg Cody. All right, Jeremy, go ahead and walk us into this you venue. Take a tour? Let's see what we've got going Let's on. Let's do this. All right, so we've got folks in here. We've got members of the Heat dance team welcoming everyone in. Hello, hello. Hi, and now Ooh. this is what we've got going on in the auditions for the Golden Oldies. Look at all <laughs> of these folks who are ready here for the golden oldies it's really spectacular i can't believe the ability that this group has this organization to bring in so many talented dancers if you focus on it danny if you want to focus in right over here a lot of the folks at the front they're the people who made the team last year but you know what's not going to happen any sort of gifts to those folks they have to audition again mm. so no matter whether they were on the team last year mm. they're on the team this year everybody has to audition again everybody needs to get prepared there's going to be i believe 15 to 20 second long freestyle dances there's going to be coordinated dances throughout the day we're going to make sure that greg is ready i believe right now he's signing his waiver there as we is. speak wow, wow. L ladies and gentlemen a moment so greg in cody is getting ready to go what's the <laughs> date uh, what is the date? That I always happens to the me. 27. The 27th. Greg, uh, Jeremy, are these Big jailhouse nightmare. rules? Like, does Greg have to go in and punch someone right away to kind of establish his dominance in this situation? I I don't think so, although he looks ready to be Greg, the prize fighter go punch in this someone. situation. Yeah, I dare you. So, um, I think Jeremy, punch one of the alums. Jeremy, you got to have the sound effect. Jeremy, I need you, I need you to confirm yeah, something. I, I want to describe to yes. the audio audience. As you guys are, are walking through and the cameraman, Danny Benitez, is, is panning across to the other contestants, we're getting a lot of right. very serious ice grills, a lot of aggressive looks from the people. Like, is there yeah. an, era, an era of intimidation happening where these people are it's cutthroat mm -hmm. and they look at Greg like he's competition? Oh. Oh, I fully believe so. These people are here ready to earn their spot on a team, no different than any other competitive team that you might find in a sport or otherwise. It's time to go find a number for Greg because these people are signing up and getting ready for what should be a really competitive day. So, Greg, you go ahead and follow me. We're going to get a number for you because, look, these folks, hello. Nice to see you. Everybody's ready. Look, we've got folks here in heat jerseys. We've got everybody ready in black, white, or red. It's really, I mean, guys, this is competitive. These are there any other deck ready. shoes? Any They're other boat shoes? Happen. Any boat <laughs> shoes? You know, as I'm scanning around, I see I a lot more supportive sketchers uh, than I see deck shoes. Mm. Um, but if Greg had worn his other shoes that he was telling us about the last couple of weeks, maybe he would have been more prepared. Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. All right. Um, Jeremy, this is my place, guys. Nice yeah, to see you. Jeremy, like, that's someone you know? Uh, I mean, of course. This, yeah, I know this, her. This is, this is Homer Central for, for Jeremy mm -hmm. Taché. It's, so we're going yeah, to step away. Good. We're going to let Greg get his number, and we're going to check back in with you when you guys are training with the, the private coach. I want to see him get the number. That's very exciting. Right. Yeah. Just what to number are you guys? Oh, 251. 251. 251. 251. <laughs> He's going to be there all day. 251 for Greg. favorite number. It's not a bakery. What are you talking about? It's going to be spectacular. All right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Let's, let, He's let, very yeah, old, ma'am. He needs no, help. Let's okay. let's check back in with them a oh, little bit later. I don't want to waste. Uh, so whatever the hell these are called. The, the <laughs> that's a great <laughs> that's not there. That's Greg, Greg talking to the only young person there. <laughs> what did you hear? What he said at the beginning? He said he's never felt younger because there's so many people that are older than him. And I said, did we find the one place where Greg Cody is the young, energetic whippersnapper? I think so, yeah. That and Key West. He yeah. runs that joint, I mean. So, <laughs> here's my question. You dropped a safety pin if you're listening on the podcast. <laughs> now, now, Billy, I, uh... Ooh, Is there a car on the stage? For Are you okay? 
<laughs> Billy, I, I, I'm going to betray something that I heard you and Taylor discussing out in the in the uh, the main room huh. here, which is a segment that may or may not come to life in the weeks that come, a segment called All Bias Aside. And I was wondering, how would Jeremy do in a segment called All Bias Aside? Because there was a point there where he went into full propaganda mode about the Miami Heat. I mean, we're talking about a dance team here. Yeah. I mean, not even, not even for a second can he put it aside. It was kind of weird. So the way that this happened is we were, you know, we're spitballing different things, talking, uh, you know, talking some shop out there, talking some baseball, and the Yankees came up because every time you talk to Taylor, the Yankees are going to come up. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were discussing now that you know the leagues are both kind of playing each other all year long. Everybody's adopted the DH. Should there be multiple MVPs? Should there be an AL MVP and an NL MVP? Should there be an NL Cy Young and an AL Cy Young? Which you know. Led to a conversation, and then, oh, Greg is now taking yeah. a photo with his oh, name. Oh, look so at that. On a whiteboard, yeah. Yep. Never been happier. We didn't need to turn the, the volume up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we were talking about it, and he said, all bias aside, one MVP. You voting for Judge or are you voting for Otani? It's Judge, all bias aside, he said to me while wearing <laughs> that, a Yankees hat and a Yankees shirt. Did he, he can't pause? say that without he didn't bias, even. He right? asked me the question, and then he immediately gave the answer without even giving me a second to think about who the MVP should be. But he did put his biases aside. He said, he said, who should be the MVP? Right. Otani or Judge? It's Judge, all bias aside. <laughs> Stugatz. That's how you do it. Yeah, I'm about to say, Stugatz, this feels like something that would be in your wheelhouse, the idea of asking a rhetorical question and answering it before the other person has a chance to even begin to kind of consider it and delivering that answer with the caveat that all biases are aside. Yeah, you're asking a question that only has one answer. There you I go. mean, I've done that a million times. Give me an example. Uh, who's better? Who's the best basketball player ever? Cut out your biases. Okay, but aren't you supposed to answer it? Michael Jordan. <laughs> okay, all biases aside? All bias aside. Oh, All right, we got now. Greg is stretching with uh, the dancing coach. She's See, this is a bit unfair. I think that's what Billy was alluding to, where I don't think the other people trying out for this team, they're getting afforded the same opportunity, mm -hmm. you know? He's the only one I see with a private lesson, right? Well, well this is... <laughs> he's not following he the lesson it, so. regardless. He's, he's teaching her okay. the yes. dance. Yeah. So this is why it's not unfair, because all these other people prep all year long for this. Greg just found out about it today. And he's going to make the team. I'm already worried yeah. about his wind. Like, I'm worried he's just going to, like. I, yeah. You know what we should have done? We should have sent him out there I, with a six-pack of Miller Lights. Don't be stealing my material. <laughs> he's announcing that to the entire room. <laughs> think yeah. people think might have been that. worried wow. about him, and they're not anymore. That was a sympathy clap. Let's do it. It no. looks like we sent a larger crew with Greg than we have working here. No, but they're worried, Chris, because Greg has cameras with him. He's got some celebrity. People are worried. They're just going to give him a spot on the team. I'm telling you right now. We got Jeremy here back. He's going to give us another update. Jeremy, what's going on? I could not believe the amount of celebrity. Greg just danced and literally received an ovation from the crowd behind him. And I've already had three different people ask me, is that Greg Cody? I've seen his picture at the bottom of the Miami Herald. These people are the target audience, the target demographic. How tired are you, Dad? This Greg, is really spectacular. How tired are you? Uh, you know what? I've, I've, I feel like I've had my exercise already. I'm, yeah. I'm winded. Uh, I'm ready to go home. You know, do a couple of 12 ounce curls. But uh, look, I'm here, man. I'm here to win it. No, I'm no. in it to win it. I do think these people probably think he's here as a bit of a gag, and they don't realize he's genuinely competing for one of their spots. Because I've had two different golden oldies from last year walk up and say, like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm so nervous. This is a big day for us. We're re auditioning because they have to audition again. And I was like, yeah, we've got Greg Cody with us. That should be fun. And I don't think that they realize that he's actually here trying to take one of their spots. So once that starts, I think they're going to be upset. Jeremy, I'll be honest yeah, with you. The, the, when, the, when you guys walked yeah. in, like I said, there were a lot of stone-faced looks from all the other competitors. But then right after Greg did his dance, Danny panned back, and they were all laughing and smiling. I feel like that was a sympathy applause yeah. more than anything. I don't know if a sympathy applause as much as, you know, this might be Greg's crowd, guys. I think these are the type of people that are liking what they see, if you know what I mean. Huh? Oh. Baby! <laughs> Just saying. How many people make this team, Jeremy? 
I actually don't know the answer to that. I'll find that uh, out before and, the next time and, I, I report back. My assumption is somewhere between 20 and 25. And then find out how many returners are auditioning, because then we'll know exactly how many spots are okay. really up for grabs. Oh, wait, you got them as rubber you got stamps? It. I will, I will possibly. That out. Mm, the politics, the politics involved. Politics. Greg, I got one last question for you before you I'll take a little questions. bit of a break. If you had a couple uh, Miller could, lights right the, now. It, if you had a couple mil lights right the now, excited din in here, I can barely hear you guys. Uh, yeah. um, All right, buzz, Greg, if yeah. you had if you had a couple of Miller lights in you right now, how much yeah. more comfortable would you be oh, it, in getting prepared for this? Well, that's a fine line, though. A couple, and I'm good. I'm loose. I'm, I'm more gregarious, but four or five, and I'm like <laughs> so. Some myself. some sweet spot between <laughs> yeah, two and so four. You gotta you gotta Just watch that. Send line. someone right, to go we'll get him make some that Miller happen lights. In the next yeah. twenty minutes. Yeah. All right. All right well, we'll do that. After I ask your questions, I'll go get some Miller Lite for him. Thank you. We'll check back with you guys in a little bit. Uh, this is a historic moment. I don't know. He's like, so but, making this team. If he, and look, and we got it all on tape. That's the crazy thing. Like, this will live forever. We'll be able to say, remember that time Greg went out there and showed the hell out? <laughs> the vibes in that room seem incredible. Does it not just sound like the most excited chatter background it noise? It Chittering. sounds great. Yeah. It sounds like donut Sundays after church. Like everyone's in a great mood. I wouldn't know how to relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the 90s when I went to church. <laughs> there you go. Right now you just light on fire if you walk past it, right? Um, I actually I have a topic that I've been meaning to bring up on the show because I think there's someone here that has the answer to all my questions mm -hmm. about the Oasis reunion happening. What is what is going on with this, Mike? Oh, thank God. Thank you for the vine. I've been dying to talk about this since it started getting rumored and so long that they've actually broken back up. Nah. <laughs> no, they, so wait, oh, oh wait, can you can we start at the top? Yes. What is a wonder Who is Oasis? Oh. Oasis? Oasis is Wonderwall. Yes. Oh, okay, that yeah. answers my Oasis question. has one of the biggest songs ever in Wonderwall. They're really and this is the reuniting of it. They're not bringing back any original members outside of the two brothers, which is fine because Oasis Nobody cares, right? is the two brothers. <laughs> right. Who are the two Liam. brothers? Noel and Liam Gallagher. Who, who, by the way, Jess, they hate each other. They have been feuding Why? forever. Yes. They, they hated each other. They've always hated each other. Past tense? They, no, they, they might, they there's might, a chance they still hate each other. They're doing absolutely. it for money. I mean, Yeah, like Guns N' Roses right. really left a lot of money on the table because during their recording prime, they decided to totally break up. And now they're they're totally fine and they're they're getting all that money that was that they miss out on during well, their peak. Not and, all of it. No. But <laughs> Oasis broke up in two thousand and nine and for many points since then there were rumored reunions that always blew up and Liam Gallagher and Noel Gallagher would always revel in the opportunity to uh, dismiss any hopes whatsoever Liam very publicly continuing their feud never really having good things to say about one another but the day has come where they've been able to put all that aside for now and reunite to much, much fanfare, especially across the pond. All differences aside, which is a different segment from all biases aside. But <laughs> Stugatz, if I say to you, there is no hatred that is stronger than a hatred between two siblings, can you find a hatred that's greater than that? Because mm. I feel like for, for it was Axl Rose versus the other guys in Guns N' Roses, right? That, that feud right there. That could not come close to the fury that is two brothers who hate each other. Right. What, what does anyone know what the feud is over? Why they're they, assholes? They Both of them like are they, assholes. They, they genuinely don't like each other's company. Yes. And, and they don't musically. They don't. They're not super compatible. They have different ideas of what direction the band should have gone in. Uh, at different times, they accuse the other person of being unprofessional when it comes to approach. So it's just always something. There isn't there isn't a patient zero when it comes to what the uh, the seeds of this rivalry has always been. They just they're like oil and water. And that's that's why I say there's no hatred that's greater than that. Even the, between exes, because exes can be like. He cheated on me, or she uh, like was, did this or whatever. When you talk about siblings, it's like there's not even like a seminal moment or an act. It's yeah. just like I just it's don't like, me, like you. It's like me with my dad. Like he could actually be on his best behavior, and I'm just annoyed by him. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, I think I was so nervous about that um, video thing going on well with Jeremy and Greg that I held my breath for the entire segment, and my hiccups went away. Yeah, I told yeah. you. I was I was nervous that right, wasn't uh, going to work out. Gotcha. But Mike, so oh, they, it worked. Their band started when they were how old? And they were able to get along well enough to make a hit. Yeah. And then they broke up? So, no, they didn't just make a hit. 
Like they they they, they had, had other plenty of hits. They're not a one hit wonder. Yeah, no, no, they're not. Yeah, they they're legit. not a one hit yeah. wonder wall. No, they they have like they have one of the hundred greatest albums ever made. Definitely, maybe was uh, a, a monster smash. They have a lot of songs. Now, granted, they are bigger in the UK. So in our lifetime, <laughs> Greg is taking group pictures right Jeez. now. He really is the bell of the ball <laughs> oh my over God. there. Uh, I think Oasis meant out of anyone here, o- Sugats's prime, like college years and like young adulthood. Hey, Oasis. Let my boy cook. <laughs> We're watching Greg Cody dance with some of the other contestants right now, and he's look. I thought he was gonna tank it. He's coming he's with not some. Tanking he's tanking it. He's coming with some no. great energy right he now. He loves this attention. He's in his glory. Yeah. <laughs> he's gonna forget the Morning. assignment, and he's accidentally gonna make the team. Morning glory. Uh, uh, <laughs> old glory. Yeah. Yes. It's very difficult to try, talk about Oasis reuniting, which is a segment that I've wanted to but, do for my, 20 years, hopeful that the day would come, and then have Greg Cody just do incredible <laughs> sight gags the entire Mike, time. Mike, w- w- put a pin in it. We're gonna come back, but right now we gotta go to Jeremy Tache, who has an update. I have an unbelievable update that I just found out from Coach Natalia of the Golden Oldies. Last year, there were 21 Golden Oldies. Last year, there were 21 of them. All 21 are back here auditioning this year, and they're only taking between 18 and 20 dancers this year. So automatically, there will be a few cut. But if they want any new blood, which every year they try to cycle in some new dancers, there will be several dancers cut this audition process i mean there were literally over a hundred people here in this room right now this is cutthroat and yeah. greg as you guys mentioned is the bell of the ball but i think as soon as they realize he might take one of their spots it might get a little intense yeah. i'm getting some icy stares there's no question about that especially yeah. from the men you know because the fewer men than women tend to make the golden oldies right. so like i'm here to take somebody's job is what they're thinking yeah exactly you know? this is this is one of the most celebrated things that a lot of these people have going on because how many times do you get to perform in front of tens of thousands of people, you know, and, and show off your dance moves. So this is, guys, this is getting pretty intense. I'm like, my heart is racing. I'm really nervous about this now. Uh, uh, Greg, you would agree the entire team returning, last year's entire team returning is a major upset, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got to yeah. have new blood. Because they're old. Yeah. Well, no, because yeah, they made it back, yeah. right? All of them. Right? It is. Yeah. Jeremy <laughs> These King. are healthy, <laughs> lively, wonderful yeah. people. Dude. Well, okay? no, there stop is, with this. Jeremy there King. There is natural can, attrition. There should be no shaming. Can you ask yeah, Coach Natalia? What happened? Coach yeah. Natalia, I believe you said it was, right? Can you ask Coach Natalia? Yes. As, uh, as, as, as you guys said, this is kind of a lot of their purpose is to be the golden oldies. Is there any concern that should you cut the golden oldies, you remove their purpose in life and that could lead to you know more spots opening up i'm not gonna up. ask that question. okay well why not it's no, something I, that uh, needs to be weighed i believe question, when yeah. making because a decision it's, rude, it's ageist no jeremy well, people uh, are lively wonderful they're beautiful well they haven't been cut yet oh we're, we're getting some testing going on okay we'll, we'll take we'll take back in dance troupe, but uh, we'll take back with you guys the, uh, golden oldies are performing there's a hearse outside the okay get, we'll get, that's why i try to send you guys away Christ, man. that's why i try to send them away that's exactly why, because I knew I could see the look in Greg's eyes. He wasn't going to say something. He's, just that was kind of He's so proud of it. Look at him. <laughs> I knew, I knew I that everyone's like, I mean, just let him say his thing. I'm like, no, no, I know where it's going. I had a feeling deep in my bones. So why did they choose now to get back together? Mike. Are we back? Yes. Yeah. Gallagher's. Yeah. All right, I, I checked out. <laughs> After the death joke, I thought we, he was really rolling. So the, the reason why they're getting back, I would assume, is money. Uh, I would assume that uh, there's a lot of money in of this. Of course it's Where money. Where I was getting at, like, you were – you're probably the best person to ask how big Oasis was over here in the United States. I know they were, they're were they massive oh, that's right. uh, across the pond. You but like when young. You, yeah, when you were getting out of college they and were big. entering yes. young adulthood and cruising the Grove, like Oasis was the biggest thing going. Oasis was music I played in my Acura Integra down oh. at Coconut Grove <laughs> when I was growing Back up. Acura Integra! Woo! <laughs> yeah. So is killing it down here. Oasis is fun. uh, yeah. funny to me because I, I do think that they're a good band. Do I think that they're a little overrated? Possibly. But Oasis wasn't really... Are they the best musicians? No. Are they the best vocalist? No. Do they have some great songs? Yes. Is every song great? No. But I, Oasis meant a lot to a lot of people in that it wasn't just the music. It was the aesthetic. It was the attitude. It was what they represented. We don't really have a lot of ties over here in the United States to, to Britpop, although a few of those bands blew up over here. And for a moment in time, Oasis was in like 
the conversation as one of the biggest rock bands in America, but not unlike West uh, West Coast hip hop and then the East Coast West Coast thing, not unlike boy bands, not unlike grunge or hair metal slightly before that. Britpop had an era inside these sure. United States. Blur, and to a much larger extent here yeah. in the United States, Oasis so, was the key band so in that a moment. A couple of things. Moment. Number one, Blur. Oasis is big rival. The only thing that Huge. could that could unite the Gallagher's was Blur. They hated those bastards. Yeah, it there. almost got to be like you have to pick a side. And Netflix Absolutely. actually has a pretty good documentary on like a, a, a on that rivalry series. on that rivalry oh. on Britpop, um, the Britpop explosion. Number two, Stu God's back me up on this. It's gonna sound blasphemous. It's gonna sound crazy, but when Oasis was blowing up with that album, definitely maybe there was a moment where like this is the new age Beatles. Like this is it. This group. I don't know if it reached, it, they it were, reached a high level. I don't know if it reached no, no, I'm, that I'm, level. They didn't reach. I'm not saying they reached the. It's like it's like imagine a player coming out and people saying, "Oh, this is the next Michael Jordan." And then that player never reaches that height because whatever happens. It was the same kind of vibe. It was like these guys are about to take over popular music, not just Brit pop, but the entire popular music. They were red hot, red hot. And then because they both had personality and they were spicy, you remember uh, the Glastonbury Festival in the UK, which is a really big deal. Uh, they, Jay-Z was going to headline it one year. And was it Noel? <laughs> Do you remember Le- when Jay-Z played Wonderwall? <laughs> well, but that's the thing, because they, they said, uh, this guy's not a musician. How could he ever play this festival? And so Jay-Z came out with a guitar and played Wonderwall played. and sang it poorly. And it was awesome. Awesome. But they were, they had, it was, the world was their oyster. Yep. And then the infighting just took them <laughs> the all infi- down. Yeah, and maybe their sound, Britpop kind of died out here, and it wasn't just because Oasis kind of flamed out. They kept going, and they didn't really reach the peaks. Here in the United States, like we had a lot of regrettable genres that kind of – Push it out of the way, mm-hmm. like uh, like uh, Fred Durst, like new metal. Yeah, uh, we had mm-hmm. our our moments over here, but they would they were still gigantic, uh, in especially in Great Britain. And you'll see in this tour, they've just announced the European legs so far of the tour, but these are stadium shows, and they'll yeah. be able to sell them out without without question. It's going to be a huge demand. I do know the legend is that the Coachella founders they make three asks every year. When they're putting together their lineup on the off chance that bands reunite. And they ask for this. Number one is the Smiths. Number two is Oasis. And now more recently, Daft Punk. They they always put oh, a feeler out to Daft that, Punk that to see one. if Daft Punk is going to reunite. But yeah, you would assume that if Oasis is back and doing their thing, Coachella's going to kick the tires to see if they want to do it. Who had more success as an individual act? Which one of the two brothers? I think they, they were both great. Uh, I... <laughs> There's an argument to be made that these guys are kind of better apart. Liam's actually had some really good, good albums recently. I'm a fan of Noel's stuff. Like they, their individual efforts have been so good individually that you're like, okay, well, if we're never going to see Oasis again, we're fine. Th- this is this will suffice. But I've never had the opportunity. By the time I got really into going to live music shows, Oasis was you know. That wasn't a scenario that could actually be real, them getting back together. Mike, really quick, what is a Wonder Wall? They kind of explain it throughout the entire song. Do they? Yeah. Hmm. All right, we're going right back to the Golden gra- no, golden Oldies. This Excuse is so me. exciting. What happened? Yeah, yeah, what happened the, I was going to say Golden Grannies. That's the Phoenix Suns. Golden Oldies is the Miami Heat. The tryouts has begun. Jeremy, take it away. I mean, this is unbelievable. We've got an intense warm-up happening right now. There was just a whole speech before everything got started about, hey, don't focus too much on the numbers of how many people we're going to take. You folks have an opportunity to prove it to us that you belong on this team. And I'm just going to let you watch for a minute because Greg is getting warmed up, number 251 right here. And, I mean, look at him. With all of these folks who are getting ready, it's it's a pretty intense moment as everybody gets oh, warmed up. It's really mean that they made him wear his stage, actual age. Of, I know. 239. 239 I, I came gotta to tell play. You, 202 is making that team. 239. 202. We saw her warming up earlier, right? Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. The red, the guy with the red tank top, 239. Look oh. at this guy. Yeah. No, this, 239 this, has been on the team oh. before. No, for, for off season info, Santa. He was on the team last year. <laughs> so he's he's been preparing for this for years. He's a seasoned vet when is it comes Marlin's to the Golden the Oldies. And there's a lot of folks here that Greg's have been shoulder here mobility is stressing me out. I want Greg to let him know there's some new blood in town. The new sheriff. Is this the warm up I mean, or this is the wasn't routine? obvious by the no, camera crew that we've sent out. No, this is just a warm up. Okay. They're just getting everybody nice and limber before getting ready Smart. to go because we don't want anybody pulling a hamstring, 
or messing up a shoulder. Uh, Greg's, yeah, well, Greg's, Greg's shoulders are really kind of stressing me out a little bit. They all signed the waiver. They're fine. Greg's they did. got a, a crazy build now that I look at him. I've never really noticed this. That's before. Cody's, you know. We're kind of awkward. I got to tell you, 207 can go home. I mean, not making the team. Go and let him know, Jeremy. Yeah. 207 has been eliminated. Yeah. You want me to just go give him a little tap? Yeah, on the go give him a tap on the shoulder. <laughs> Let's start eliminating people officially. <laughs> just me, just me. Yeah, head over there, Jeremy. Come sign, on. Tap on the shoulder. They're in your stripes. The America's no, Next right, Top guys. Model. Thing. I think I'm okay. Like they disappear, one of them, every time someone gets eliminated. <laughs> Dissolves. I'm just worried about Greg. If I'm being honest with you guys, everybody else looks like they've been stretching over the off season, and Greg looks <laughs> kind of comfortable. Stretch, Gary. He's also Greg just behind pointed. everyone else. The woman behind so 215 I'm, looks like I'm a kind of ringer. Concerned. I don't think she's 60. I agree. That's the thing that's amazing here is there are some folks where I'm like, really? You're 60? Because the type of shape that they're in, oh. it's really amazing. Yeah, it went quiet at the wrong that time for Jerry. The change was real awkward, yeah. dude. That, I love that people are questioning other away. people's age there. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I want <laughs> my dad bending over. It's like an AAU tournament. Toes, and I do not see Greg touching toes. So guys, it's like an AAU tournament. We're going to have to start demanding birth certificates. Wait a second. There's no way <laughs> this kid is this I'm age. not Greg kidding you guys. To come up. This is the first time my dad has stretched in years. Mm. And that is not an exaggeration. He's so sorry. He's out of breath already. Guys, if you look at the rest of this group, Danny, can you pan to the rest of the group for a minute? Everyone oh is touching their toes. Everybody looks comfortable. And then uh, there's Greg. And if you go back to Greg, he can barely touch his knee. His leg is shaking. And he's just waiting to come back up from every single stretch. Can we pan he over the shoes struggling. that everyone is wearing yeah. in, in comparison to Greg's deck <laughs> shoes? Because I sense another trend, which is that he's sticking out a little bit on that one. I'm really worried about Greg's <laughs> confidence after this because I we think talk he to came him? in feeling no, no, really, no, no. really good. I mean, if you guys have any questions, I can get in there and no, ask him no, a question. No, no, no. But I, let, he let's, looks let's pretty locked zero. into me. I have a question. I want to know the last time he stretched. All right, let me just go ahead and scoot wow. in. Wow, what's with the onlookers hey, back there? Hey, they just aren't participating. Right. When is the last time that you stretched like this? Uh, never. Great. <laughs> never. The twelfth of never, he says. But how is he doing? Check in on him. I mean, okay, I'll check no, in again. Guys, why are you in between these he's people, trying Greg, to lock in. How, how are we doing, Greg? How are we feeling? Um, sore. Already? I, uh, this is not what I do. Is he stuck? <laughs> this is not what I do. <laughs> move? Wait, is Greg not wearing socks? Stuck. He's not wearing socks No, of course now. not. I love how I'm, he's just stretching, and I'm genuinely worried about my dad right now. <laughs> All the joy that he had on his face it earlier. It is hilarious that this is before. Has, now it's real. It's right. drained out of it. The joy is gone. And He's already regretting this. Like, this hurts. I think we got it. I'm worried just, about it. Yeah, He's going to be sore for days, guys. It's, uh, it started as a cute little activation, right? Make fun of the old people, and then you realize right. you're the oldest one. Yeah. I want to make it abundantly clear, guys. That's why I was making sure that we weren't making fun of these folks because they are spry, athletic, and everything unlike Greg Cody. That, that, those people stretch better what? than I this do. This lady is Jesus. putting my dad to shame this, right now. She's a lot. It's a real fofa. It's unbelievable <laughs> comparison. Whoa. I swear that's Marlon's man it's back a, there. It's a dance team. It's not a stretch team, Greg. So don't worry yeah, exactly about it. exactly right. You got this, Greg. I believe in you. I don't know, 239 had me a little worried getting up there. Speaking of, Chris. You had to tie his shoe. Yeah, I don't know what's going uh, on there. Visually, yes. just so that everybody in the audio audience can understand what's happening. Look here. at 202 dancing. Leaning each yeah. way. Yeah, there are some folks that have rhythm as they're stretching, which is pretty spectacular. They're dancers. 239 they're is well. Shoulders awesome. look well, they're like stretchers they're right now. So popping guys. out. Yeah. That, uh, Jeremy, he's not doing that right. Do we know if he auditions? Do we know if he auditions alone or with a group? Oh, I don't know the answer. I believe that that there's not a solo the right freestyle. What is my dad doing? That's not the right position. Yeah, what is happening right now? Stretching it. <laughs> what is he doing? Just a, <laughs> not it. Just I'm a reminder. I'm genuinely concerned. What is he, he might think choke he's himself supposed to out. be doing? Look, you see this person right here in the heat shirt? That is not a 6 She's a dancer, I believe. For the listening audience, I just want to remind right them, you can watch all of this on YouTube and or the DraftKings Network because, man, I know you guys like to listen. And I'm telling you, you ain't got to watch girl, the whole right? thing, but you want to watch this for sure. Because Greg <laughs> looks depleted right now. He looks well, like... It's just so funny. If, if Danny, if we could put just Greg on screen with the two ladies right here in front of him, just to show the comparison of how 
limber and talented they are as compared to Greg, it is one of the funniest visuals I've ever witnessed in my life. 220 is a ringer. To audition here. He yeah. can't even lift his ankle off the ground. Yeah, 220 is a ringer. Yeah. I believe both of these ladies right here in front were on the team last year. Oh, we've got some rhythm rocking here, guys. All right, we'll, we'll check back in with you, Jeremy. Hope, keep, you can hope, keep him on screen, but yeah. we're going to do some show here. I was enjoying that song. Me too. I was getting uh, a little Lionel Richie. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's find a little rhythm now. <laughs> I love this. I think there's there's like what there's Look there's probably face. less than five guys there, no. right? There's two thirty nine. There's two thirty five. Marlins man. Greg. Marlins man. And Marlins man. Yeah. Yo, no, Marlins. I, the Marlins show man is not here. The show within the show that's happening in my ear from Lewis is so damn distracting. <laughs> you want to I, share it with us? I cannot share it. This is highly inappropriate conversation. Glad you mentioned it. I'm trying, this is my way of telling him to stop, basically. <laughs> Let me do the show. Uh, Jeremy, we'll check back with you. The images will remain on our screens while we do some more show here. Stugatz, during the break, I saw you come back in from the outside. Yes. Presumably from your heater break. I was in the garage, yep. Not I mean not technically not outside. I was inside where it's hotter. Yeah. I thought you weren't allowed to do that anymore. Yeah. Well, I mean you, I just, you came in from outside. I was hiding. Yeah. So anyways, I, I confess this to God that whenever I see him coming back from outside, I, there's a bit of me that feels a little FOMO. I wish I was a smoker because he reminds me of a, of a different time, of like the late 90s when the smoking bans first started happening. Mm -hmm. You'd be walking in New York listening City. Listening to Wonderwall. It's uh, listening to Wonderwall. It's freezing outside. It's and amazing. as you walk into a building, you see a group of huddled people shivering with a cigarette to their mouth. Because this is before they had the rule that you had to smoke like 300 feet away from the entrance. Right. People were right outside that front door like this. And I always thought to myself, what a strong sense of community. <laughs> and commitment and commitment yes. and i just want i wanted to be a part of that even if i don't enjoy smoking in and of itself you know what i've heard people uh, the, of an older generation than me say that bumming a cigarette from someone oh. or going outside to do, you know smoke with someone was a great icebreaker and a great way to like kind of meet someone and chat with them without having any pressure and it's harder to sort of like make those connections with strangers now. Right, because you have something in common, and what you have in common is that you're killing yourselves. I yeah, mean, right. right. Yes, yes. I mean, I, I, and I'm not saying that the, the pros don't outweigh the cons in this scenario, but I, maybe there is some truth to it. You know, it's like an easy way to, to bridge the conversation gap with people that you don't know. Jessica, I'll tell you, one of my great kind of disappointments in life is when someone asks me, hey, can I bum a cigarette or do you have a light? And I have to say no because I don't smoke, but I can never just say no. I actually, like, pat my pocket as if I might have had just a spare lighter by some This happened to me two days ago at the barbecue contest. <laughs> Someone says, does anyone have a light? And I was like, ah. Oh. Did you, you did you pat your pockets? I was like, ah, oh, let me check my Wait, purse. Wait, so both ah. of you go through the routine knowing you don't have a lighter? Not only do I go through the routine, Stugatz, I feel bad that <laughs> oh, I don't have a lighter. I apologize. I'm I like, feel, I'm sorry, I don't. I let you down. I really feel like I let them down. It's one of the great disappointments in life. <laughs> really? I'm telling you. I'll put it up there. Do you, do you have others? I mean, a top five? You want to be a top five disappointments in life? You have that? I do have that. Oh my God. Weirdly, Roy did have a grill lighter in his bag that was Woo! several feet long. You so should always yeah. have one, yeah. 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 He just happens to carry it out. Yeah. Always ready to grill. Is Greg cracking a sweat, by the way? I I they all just applauded after they stretched. They're like, not, all right, we're done stretching. Woo! I have not forgotten about your top five. I am glued to Greg no, Cody right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's looking at he's, he's out of breath. Oh, man, this is great. So you're saying not having a lighter when someone asks you for a lighter is one of the biggest disappointments in life? In life, absolutely. Like, no, obviously, Weird. we're not talking about, like, the, I didn't get the big promotion or whatever. Not, like, real-life events. I'm talking about day-to-day -day kind of mundane things that makes me feel great disappointment. <laughs> I, I could not step up to the plate and hand you the lighter, good smoker, sir. All right. So I make sure, people, if you want to find out, where, whether Greg made the team or not, mm -hmm. we're going to be posting stuff on social the rest of the day because we got to go now. The show's over, and he's still oh, out wow. there as we're looking now. So we will post things. Make sure to listen to Best Back in My Day coming up next.
on the post game. Greg's show. doing Absolutely. the secret check his pulse move right yes, now. Yes, he is. Yeah. <laughs> his neck. He's checking his yeah, neck. Yeah, he's checking his pulse, but he's making it seem like he's just holding his neck. All right, Sugats, I got 45 seconds here. Let's you do it. Top Number- five. All right, here we go. Top five disappointments in life. Number five, people who discover I work for DraftKings and want gambling advice. I don't have it. I don't know. Number four, missing a wide open layup after a really good pass from someone on the basketball court. Great disappointment and shame. Number three, when everyone is excitedly talking about last weekend's college football slate and I have nothing to contribute. I didn't watch. Buzz, buzz, though. Other than Georgia Tech, yep. Number two, when being offered cocaine and having to say, I don't take, I don't do coke. I'm always disappointed. I'm like, I don't know why. Like, I feel You're like disappointed. You don't do cocaine. Yeah, it's like I feel like I let them down. And I number mean, one, <laughs> and number Three. one, as I said, when someone asks me for a light and I don't have it. This is the Dan Levator Show with the Stugats Podcast. And now the Sui nominees for best back in my day. Packing. Unzipping a suitcase to a sea of packing cubes is as dispiriting as opening the fridge to find wall-to-wall Tupperware tubs. It's the illusion of efficiency. Somebody on a get-rich-quick bender invents something we don't need because they know that gullible, trend-gobbling travelers would eat it up. So here come the packing cubes to my doorstep. The only zippered container I want in my suitcase is the old-fashioned friend with the charmingly unfortunate name, the toiletry bag. Packing a suitcase does not require science or a system, folks. I don't need a cube to organize me or save space. I stuff three pair of underwear in one dress shoe and balls of socks and a coiled-up belt in the other. I proudly underpack. Nobody packs light like me because nobody (laughs) cares or knows if I wear the same pair of undies more than once. Nobody on the cruise ship is whispering, disparaging, hey, didn't that man over there wear that same dress shirt four days earlier? And if I forget my belt, well, I bet those sell in Alaska. And if they don't, it wouldn't be the first time I cinched together two belt loops with a piece of twine and walked out of there with a chin-up strut. So here I am, just another <laughs> lemming sliding to his airport gate with the unwanted convenience of telescoping handles and rolling wheels. You can't even buy the suitcase you want nowadays. I went into a luggage store and asked for a large leather valise with a strap handle. Didn't have it. Carpet bags? He said no. I said, can I get a wooden steamer trunk? Nope, didn't have that either. I can't get the suitcase I want. At least let me pack it my way. No cubes allowed. I'm Greg Cody. Yeah. And that's how it was back in my day. Hotel housekeeping. <laughs> Maid service was a part of the deal. You expected it. You returned to a welcoming pillowy duvet, a neat stack of fresh towels standing sentry at the ready, the end of the toilet roll folded in a V for no apparent reason whatsoever other than to make me feel cared for. It was that little bit of uncommon luxury. Oh, you'd like an extra shampoo brought to your room? Right away, Mr. Coat. Hey, I'm easy to please. Two mints on a pillow, and I feel like a doggone king. Now, you feel guilty even asking for housekeeping, like little Lord Fauntleroy demanding a pedicure. (laughs) Some chains now recommend you leave trash outside your door for pickup. What? Marriott's policy varies by property but housekeeping is mostly by request now with rooms cleaned automatically only every sixth night my hotel room after six days unattended would look like a team of frat boys had sardined in and during mardi gras in my room after six days without maid service you'd find bedding on the floor (laughs) towels scattered like shrapnel pizza boxes in the bathtub empty miller light bottles arranged across the room in neat triangles like bowling pins and a lamp inexplicably in the refrigerator (laughs) hotels if i'm paying you 429 dollars to sleep in your room for a night the least you can do literally the least you can do is keep that room clean i'm greg cody and that's how it was back in my day (laughs) pre-boarding hey look i know you get what you pay for You pay for a first-class ticket, and we folks who don't understand we have to do that walk of shame past the big spenders already (laughs) quaffing red wine as we slog past slump shoulder to the 38th row. We will now begin pre-boarding for people traveling with small children, active military with an ID or in uniform, and others who need extra time or assistance. The real loophole is that last part. 
others who need extra time or assistance. It's meant for the very elderly, perhaps, but this is where you see all manner of able-bodied solo travelers and people with imaginary anxieties and phobias all boarding for no good reason ahead of the rules following cattle in the back. Yes, ma'am, I suffer from... Lavabo Tracero syndrome, related to a fear of being seated next to a rear cabin commode. I have a note from Dr. McGillicuddy. On Southwest, with no assigned seating, even if you pay extra to be in Group A, you're still watching the parade of the entitled flow into the cabin ahead of you. Half of any given flight is these pre-board scam artists. The pre-board message might as well just say, Anyone who feels they are intrinsically better than other people may board now. <laughs> Airlines, let your first-class money bags in first. Fine. But don't make we proletariats suffer the added indignity of also waiting behind all of your club members and all those pathological fakers. Run a tighter ship. I'm Greg Cody, and that's how it was back in my day. Briefcases! <laughs> if you were carrying a briefcase, you were a man or a woman on a mission sailing along city streets like the prow of a ship, walking cocksure as Tony Manero in the opening credits of Saturday Night Fever, and surely headed for a boardroom. Other pedestrians parted as you strode past, and in your wake said to themselves with an admiring nod, there goes a professional man. Now? Now someone seen carrying a briefcase is about as common as a man wearing a Lincoln stovepipe or a woman in a Carmen Miranda fruit hat. The briefcase is on the endangered list headed for extinction. Now all you see are people sloughing slump-shouldered from carrying slovenly backpacks, the very lowest rung on the luggage ladder. The only people who need to carry backpacks are students with textbooks in them, the original intended use, and folks ascending a trail on a hike. Why are you carrying a laptop in a backpack that's beneath the laptop? demeaning. Not only the rising scourge of backpacks, soft shoulder bags and totes have killed the briefcase. The trend to more casual workplace environments has too. Save that staple of Americana, the briefcase, before it's too late. Enjoy again the delight of that simple sound as those twin latches snap shut and then open to reveal who you are. I'm Greg Cody and that's how it was back in my day. Clotheslines! <laughs> Where'd they go? Gone with the wind. Or rather the gentle breeze that once caressed our washed garments to a state of sun-kissed dry. The clothesline was nature's clothes dryer. Efficient, cost-free, and noise-free, but for the soothing riffle or soft snap of a bedsheet as a mild gust passed by. Nowadays, clothes are thrown into the behemoth maw of the electric dryer in the laundry room. Your clothes in a sodden ball, a wet clump as the dryer lumbers to life. With great clatter and racket, the time-consuming dryer spends an hour banging and twisting and high-heating and, over time, shrinking your garments. It's textile torture. Meantime, the sun winks and the breeze tickles in the backyard where the clothesline once stood. Beyond the cost-saving and the quiet, mechanical dryers emit greenhouse gas emissions and increase fabric wear and tear. The breeze doesn't. The clothesline also produces no static cling or cloying perfume from fabric softeners and much less wrinkling as well. Make it a family project. Erect your own clothesline. The air fryer is all the rage. Why not the air dryer, the one waiting for you in the fresh air out back? I'm Greg Cody, and that's how it was back in my day. Waterbeds. At its peak, almost 25% of all beds sold in America were flotation mattresses. Now it's barely 2%, and most of those are related to medical rehab. What happened? The waterbed was cool once, embraced first by hippies and the free-spirited, free love movement before it caught on in the suburbs. Bump, chicka, bump, bump, if you catch my drift. Oh, or to I, be specific. A, it's not a drift anyone wanted. Baby! Unmistakably, there was a sexual element. Hugh Hefner, in the prime of Playboy, famously had a waterbed. The waterbed boom was starting just as the bump, chicka, bump, bump Please. was dawning well, in you, Greg you Cody's life. You made it a life. game show sound. You made it and a he tried one out in his friend's off-campus apartment. Hated it. Don't get me wrong, I can sleep on anything. I've slept on a bed of nails. 
I don't need any bells or whistles. What? Don't need a foam memory bed that outlines my body like a victim at a crime scene. Don't need sleep number bed. Certainly don't need a water bed that to me was like trying to fall asleep or do anything else. Wink, wink on a raft in the middle of an ocean. For me, even the squishy, sloshing sound they made was weird. To install one, you had to run a hose into the bedroom. The whole thing was bizarre. This is where I'd usually say, bring back the waterbed. No, don't do it. You go ahead and ride the waves to sleep. I shall repose on the firm, dry land. Thank you. I'm Greg Cody, and that's how it was back in my day. Adultery! That no! Is- we are back. I waited for this one. Wait, 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 wait. By accident, what just happened? I think that's the record. Roy, for years, has been counting the amount of time that he pregnant pauses there. That was the record because he was looking for his papers. Because we, he was surprised that he has it back in my day. <laughs> I got a lot of papers here. I'm a busy man. Adultery. Okay, let's be honest about something inherently dishonest. Adultery, infidelity, cheating, whatever you want to call it was so much easier back before technology came along and ruined everything. Or rather, so I'd imagine the clandestine (laughs) Casanovas would lament. Cheating was easy once. You just had to make sure you weren't doing it around friends, neighbors, or coworkers. So if you lived in Mayberry, the two of you drove up to Mount Pilot, got a corner booth at the bar, then a room at the Notel Motel, and called it a night. You were blessedly incommunicado. There were no cell phones allowing any busybody snoop to record or photograph you. You were completely out of touch until you dropped a dime in a payphone. Now, every text message and voicemail exchange is retrievable. You think delete search history actually does that? Ha <laughs> ha, your naivete is so cute. Back in my day, you wrote a fake name in the motel guest book. The board clerk said you're in room nine, Dr. McGillicuddy, and you went on your merry way. Now there'd be an unblinking ring camera above the door ratting on you. Modern day debauchers and Lotharios have only two choices. You either give up your cheating ways or you hopelessly bemoan technology and understand that today a smartphone would be pinging your exact location in that dark corner booth as you swig your third Manhattan. <laughs> I'm Greg Cody, and that's how it was back in my day. Vegas! <laughs> I'm going to say it point blank. The old Vegas was better. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, this boy. used to be an exotic destination with a real mystique because it was the only place in America to legally bet on sports. You felt a little naughty coming here. Daring. I want to ride back to the Vegas of yore when Frank and Dean and Sammy played the smoke-filled Cobra Room at the Sands. Frank under a sharp creased fedora, Dino with a scotch in one paw and a lit cigarette in the other. Sammy snapping his fingers even when there was no music. I want an all-you-can-eat buffet for $3.95. Diverticulitis be damned. My own trio, the Hee Haw Three. We played Vegas concurrent with the Rat Pack, but we weren't as big. We were the Zagak Pack, but we had our following. We invented the Vegas residency back then. We were the opening act for a while for Saul Anka, Paul's bitter older brother. (laughs) I want that Vegas back. The old Vegas with the wood-paneled room where octogenarian women in Dolly Parton wigs swooned to a 960-pound Elvis impersonator who never left his Barco lounger. Breathe. Yes, (sighs) yes. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This is it. Look. Hold on, hold on. This is Oxygen. halftime. Oh, halftime of the back of my day. Time. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> that was. I was legitimately scared you guys, there for no, a second. Yeah. Look. <laughs> you, I want the old school slot machines where all you needed was three sevens or cherries and you didn't push a button. You had tactile involvement. Yes. Pulling the black ball knob down so that it felt like you were losing money slower. <laughs> the drive through chapels. Speaking of marriage, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas used to be true. It was the adulterer's capital. A man could bring his second family here. I never had a problem. That was before smartphones made what? every guy two tables over a potential blackmail photographer. Bring back old sad yes, Vegas. Yes. Bring back the Copa room at the Sands. Eschew the slots button for the black knob and get rid of smartphones and give me back my privacy. I'm Greg Cody and that's yeah. how it was back in my day.